and the Biden administration. We'll be right back. Auto repair costs are up nearly 20% from last year. That's four times the rate of inflation. So when you enroll in a car protection plan through CarShield, you can look forward to the following. CarShield offers protection plans starting as low as $100 a month with flexible month-to-month coverage, no long-term contracts, and options to fit everybody's budget. They have repair coverage for up to 5,000 parts, and you have your choice of ASE certified mechanics. They have a price lock guarantee. This is big, meaning the price will never go up, no matter how many claims you file or even as the mileage on your car increases. That's a big deal. Call CarShield today, 800-898-6155, or go to carshield.com slash Levin. That's slash L-E-V-I-N. To save 20%, that's 800-898-6155. Or go to carshield.com slash Levin to save 20%. What happens when the best meets the best? Tonight, we find out. (laughs) Welcome to Artesia Bulldog Football on AM 990 and 93.7 FM KSVP and online at KSVPTV.com. Tonight, district play gets underway as the number one and number two teams in the state battle it out. It's your Artesia Bulldogs versus the Coyotes of Roswell High. Let the battle begin. Bulldog football on KSVP AM and FM and at KSVPTV.com is presented by Artesia Animal Clinic, Artesia Credit Union, Artesia Family Health Center, and Presbyterian Medical Services, Artesia Board Sales, Artesia General Hospital, Artesia Plumbing and Heating, Artesia Police Department, Big O Tires, Bob Reed Pest Control, Buckhorn Productions, LLC, Business Notions, Kane Electric Supply, Central Valley Electric, Cisco Equipment, Deans Incorporated, Devon Energy, Dooley's Auto Sales, Edge Safety, ENMU Portalis, and ENMU Roswell, Faith Baptist Church, Forest Tire, Guy Chevrolet, H&R Block of Artesia, Hermosa Church of Christ, H.F. Sinclair, Hawker & Sons, J&J Home Care, J.S. Ward, KFC of Artesia, La Fonda, Lois Oliver Real Estate, Moppin & Brown Dentistry, Pecos Valley Equipment, Pepsi, Pressure Services, LLC, Primary Residential Mortgage, Ridgeland Motors, Roger and Ramona Kilpatrick of Berkshire Hathaway Enchanted Lands, Roswell Seed Company, Smile Expressions, Southwest Printers, Sun Country Garden Center, Tate Branch of Artesia, Turpening & Sons Mortuary, Trustmark Roofing, University of New Mexico, Will Banks Trucking, Sandy Stockton, and State Farm of Artesia. Now, on with the action. Good evening, Bulldog fans. Joby Hodling here with Coach Moppin, and we've got um, the big first district game of the year coming, Coach, tonight. Mm-hmm. But bef- before we talk anything about that, let's talk about the last two weeks. You had a week off, uh, finished your last game strong, got a win. You're 7-0 and coming into district. Talk about how you guys prepare your kids when they got a week off, how practice goes then, and then how practice comes into this week with your first district matchup. Yeah, I mean, I think our, you know, our staff really, we, we were breaking down Roswell, you know, prior to last week. So we were ready to go, uh, you know, Tuesday with that first practice. And uh, so we started putting a lot of things in and, and we're working on a lot of different looks and, and running against their defense and running, you know, their plays and scout team. And so, uh, you know, last week was kind of the week, like we want, we definitely didn't want to take a week off. You know, some teams do that, but uh, we, we dialed back a little bit, got healthy um, but we practiced, you know, three days last week and, and got some conditioning in and then, you know, kind of got to be a part of Max Memorial, which was uh, really cool to be a part of that. And then uh, kind of come in this week to a normal week and game plan Monday. And it was kind of just a review of things that we had already we had already been running uh, last week. And so um, that was good for our kids to just kind of see like, oh, that's why we're doing some of those things because we were showed them film this week and then. Uh, turn around and we've had you know really three good practices this week and or four good practices this week so we're we're excited about this game uh you mentioned you got to be involved in in mac chase his funeral and or his memorial service i guess better way to put it uh kind of fitting for such a giant here in artesia to, to you know we hate to lose anybody hate to lose uh mr chase but uh, he passed away last week and and that uh, was on an off week yes yeah as i, I was talking to coach henderson i was like can you imagine if this was like during Roswell week? It'd be, you know, crazy. Like it's just, it worked out well. And we were so honored to be a part of that and to honor him. All right, coach. Well, you've got your first district game. You guys have rested up as you pointed out. Um, you're prepared. Got Roswell tonight. Then you're going to play the balance of your schedule the next two weeks. But 
Uh, talk just real briefly about our district. Yeah, I mean, I think our district's one of the toughest districts in the state. I mean, um, like right now, I mean, all of us are ranked in the top five in our classification. Uh, I think by the end of the season, you know, it's going to be you're going to have probably three, maybe four teams in our district getting a bye in the first round. Um, and so that tells you a lot about our district and in a 5A football. And we all play. The good thing, too, is pretty much all of us play really hard schedules. I mean, uh, Mayfield plays all those big schools there in Cruces. Um, and then Goddard, us, and Roswell play Hobbs and Carlsbad. And uh, they play Clovis and Santa Fe. And we play Cleveland. And so um, I think we're, we're all very well tested. And so now we play against each other and where we match up probably a little bit better, you know, size and speed and everything wise. And so uh, we're, we're excited to get going this week in Roswell and then set our focus on Goddard and then finish with Mayfield. And just like everything else, we take it all one week at a time. But but we know this is, we call it season two here that we're heading into, and we got to have our guys ready every week because we're going to get some of the best teams in our class and their best game every week. All right, Bulldog fans, we've got the first district showdown coming up at the top of the hour right here at the Wool Bowl. We've also got uh, the scout team coach coming up here in a minute on the pregame show, ksvptv.com and KSVP Radio. Stay right there. Go Bulldogs. This segment brought to you by Roger and Ramona Kilpatrick of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Enchanted Land Realtors, and Artesia. Proud supporters of Bulldog Sports. you to start your journey at Cotera Energy. Here at Cotera Energy, our operations are growing fast and we're looking for qualified individuals for field and office positions. New employees are eligible to receive a sign-on bonus and once hired, they'll receive an unmatched benefits package. Producing energy, empowering people, building community. Text Cotera, C-O-T-E-R-R-A to 71441 to start your journey today. Cotera Energy is an equal opportunity employer. HF Sinclair invites you to the Lions Club tailgate party Friday, October 20th before the Artesia Goddard Rocket football game. 4 to 6.30 p.m. Bulldog Bowl parking lot. This is a free community event with free burgers and hot dogs. All you need to do is show your game ticket to enter and game tickets can be bought on site. Come out and enjoy music, games, giveaways, free snow cones, and more. That's the Lions Club tailgate party 4 to 6.30 p.m. at Bulldog Bowl Friday, October 20th. Join HF Sinclair in helping the Lions Club celebrate 30 years of tailgating. ENMU Open House Preview Day for high school students is Saturday, October October 28th on campus in Portales. High school students and their parents can get information about admission and scholarships, find out about potential majors, get a specialized campus tour, and have a chance to win great prizes, including a $500 scholarship. Come visit campus and learn about our safe, family-friendly college environment. Sign up today at enmu.edu slash open house. Eastern New Mexico University. Student success. That's what we're about. Bob Reed Pest Control protects you and your home by controlling pests that invade. Bob Reed Pest Control understands the importance of safety in and around your home from unwanted pests. Protect your family's most important investment, your home, and protect your children and pets from the dangers of poisonous bugs and insects. Call Bob Reed Pest Control today and let our fully licensed pest control professionals start working for you and your family. Find us fast in names and numbers. Call 623-5344, serving all of Southeast New Mexico. Hi, this is Social Norman. DWI is socially unacceptable. Nearly all drivers feel it's unacceptable to drink and drive. 
we've got a problem, New Mexico. Too many drunk drivers on our roads. The beverages that you consume could lead you to an early tomb. Remember, buzz driving is drunk driving. Heed the warnings. It's not just the police anymore. We're all on the lookout for impaired drivers. Plan in advance for a safe ride home. Never drink then drive. This message brought to you by the Eddy County DWI program. Get great service with Pressure Services. Pressure Services LLC specializes in hydro vacs, vacuum trucks, kill trucks, sandblasting and coating, and roustabouts. The Bulldogs are champions on and off the field, and Pressure Services LLC are your champions when it comes to dependable, accountable, and efficient service. When you need it right, Pressure Services will be there for you. Pressure Services LLC, 575-736-1047. Go Bulldogs! Wilbanks Trucking Services in Artesia is seeking dedicated and motivating individuals to join their team. Immediate openings include CDL drivers with pay starting at $25 to $33 per hour depending on experience. Riggers with pay starting at $20 per hour and open positions for owner operators. Wilbanks Trucking Services offers full benefits including medical, dental, vision, 401k and housing for out of town employees. For more information on career opportunities, please call Call 575-746-6318 or online at willbanks.us. Willbanks Trucking Services is an equal opportunity employer. Whether on the field or buying or selling your home, a winning team makes all the difference. Let Roger and Ramona Kilpatrick of Berkshire Hathaway in Artesia earn your business and help you score big. They can help you find the home of your dreams. And if you're selling, they have years of experience to get your home sold quickly and professionally. Run it into the end zone. Call and schedule your meeting today, 575-616-2430 or Stop by the office at 408 South 1st in the building with the Bulldog Mural. Roger and Ramona Kilpatrick, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Enchanted Lands Realtors in Artesia. Proud supporters of Bulldog Sports. Welcome back to the pregame. Welcome back to the pregame show. Joby Hodling here, coach, joined by Coach Rodriguez. And, Coach, big week this week with Roswell at the Wool Bowl. Uh, you're the scout team coach this week. Let's talk a little bit about Roswell for the fans. Um, let's talk about their offense first. What are you guys expecting to see them come out in? Uh, base set or do they have a lot of sets how about their size and speed yeah so what Roswell usually does is they're a shotgun wing tee team you know they've taken the old wing tee uh, spread it out a little bit into the shotgun uh, they actually have a pistol back right behind them so they've got a tight end wing on one side that's their number one formation that they come out in uh, they're looking to run the football I mean they're a 60 percent run 40 percent pass team and uh, they're trying to get the ball to their playmakers, and uh, they'll take anything you give them. If you take up the middle, they're going to take the edge. If you get, if you stack the edge, they're going to take everything up the middle. Um, they've got quite a few returning starters. About nine out of the eleven are returning from last year, so it's kids who know the program. It's kids who know the expectation of what they want over there, um, and they run the offense really well. So we've got to make sure that we're we're ready to stop that. Well, let's move over to the defensive side of things. What are y'all's expectations? What are you guys as coaches' expectations to see them against your really tough offense? You guys offer a lot offensively. What do you think you're going to see with that, and how about their size and speed on that side of the ball? So they, they've got some a lot of returners, again, on defense, too. Uh, I think they return 9 or 10 over there as well. And so they've, they've grown a lot. You know, some of the defensive linemen have gotten a little bit bigger. Uh, the linebackers, they've got two out of, three, out of the three back from last year. And then in the secondary, they have three of the four back from last year. Um, they've got some decent size at the D-line, especially on the interior positions. Um, so Noah Lynn, he, he's a pretty big kid, about 6'2", 240, 250 pounds. And then another kid by the, by the last name of Greathouse, Mason Greathouse. Uh, he's also a pretty big kid. Uh, just about all of them are almost over six foot, and they get off the ball really well. And I think that's the strength of their team right there is their defensive line. Um, but schematically, what we expect them to come out in is probably a four down look, and then they'll play some quarters behind it. They do have some scenario change ups, you know, by situation. So they'll change some things up and uh, really try to be prepared for us and, and try to slow us down as much as possible. All right, well, now let's go on to the third phase of the game, the kicking game, and, and you guys do a lot in the kicking game. What can the fans expect to see from Roswell in their various kicking games? Yes, you know, last year their kickoff was a little bit different. Um, they had a lot of speed on it, and uh, they did some different things formationally. This year they haven't shown it as much. They've had a chance to kick off a lot. They've uh, scored a ton of points, so they've had a chance to kick off a lot. They're pretty solid on their kickoff. Their kickoff return is still trying to run the starburst. Not many people are kicking it to them, though. They've kind of, uh, you know, had to, to make some adjustments because people aren't kicking them the football. Haven't had to return many kicks this year. They haven't given up many touchdowns. Uh, so there's not much of that on film. 
Uh, their punt is, is the same that it's always been. It's a very pro style, uh, what you would call a spread punt. Everybody's tight together, and once the ball's kicked, they spread out. They've got a very good punter in Zai Carrasco. He's one of their starting safeties. He's a great athlete, and uh, I think actually the fake punt is his, his one of his better plays. And so he's got a 50-yard average, um, and so he does really well on their punt team. Uh, their punt return, you know, they're going to come after you. They're going to try to get a block. Mm. Um, so, you know, their their extra point and field goal is nothing uh, out of the ordinary. It's it's status quo. And then uh, their, their uh, extra point block is also kind of that same way. Very sound, um, but not trying to make it too complicated for their guys. All right, Bulldog fans, you got a scouting report. At the top of the hour, we've got the games. Uh, Friday night lights, 7 o'clock at the Wool Bowl. But before we get to that, during the pregame show, we've got meet some Bulldogs. So stay right there, KSVPTV.com and KSVP Radio. Go Bulldogs. Brought to, you by Ro- brought to you by Roger and Ramona Kilpatrick of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Enchanted Land Realtors, and Artesia. Proud supporters of Bulldog Sports. Open for business. Located across the street from the Derek Floor statue in Artesia, Incredible Printing is Artesia's only local printer. Incredible Printing makes your business that high-flying brochure needed to advertise those new services or products. Incredible Printing also specializes in all carbon copy books and material. Incredible Printing is open in Artesia, across from the Derek Floor statue. To be a champion, each team member must do their part to help the team win. That is true in business, too. Edge Safety and Services, LLC, want to do their part to help your business win. They specialize in several field services, sandblasting, coating steamers, pressure washing, repairs, and cleanouts. Edge Safety also offers drug and alcohol screening and on-site services and safety trainings to make you better. Edge Safety and Services, LLC, 575-736-1047. Proud supporter of the RT. Bulldogs. Trusted service, no need to lie. Pop online, our reviews are high at Big O. At Big O Tires. The Changing Seasons Changing Tires event is here. Now through October 29th, get $70 to $100 instant savings on four select in stock Pirelli, Goodyear, or Cooper tires. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Excludes Pirelli P4 Persist tires. Installation charges extra. Required on all four tires. Not valid with other offers. Eligibility may vary. Disposal fees extra and shop fees extra where permitted. See store for details. At Richland Motors, it's never been easier to sell or trade your current car, truck, or SUV for a newer model to hit the road in. Even if you don't purchase from Richland, they want to buy your vehicle for top dollar. But if you do buy from Richland, don't forget, they're the home of the powertrain warranty for life. That's a whole lot of confidence for you. See Richland for details, 2nd and Sycamore, and 1309 Southeast Main. Every piece of land has a story, written by those who work it. And everyone's story is different. So the question is, how will you tell yours? Behind the wheel of a John Deere compact tractor, mower, or gator utility vehicle. Run with us and start telling your story today. Stop by Pecos Valley Equipment in Artesia and Roswell or visit us online at PecosValleyEquipment.com. Hey, Artesia Bulldog fans, are you ready to unleash the spirit of victory this season? Tate Branch Auto Group is proud to stand alongside the Bulldogs as they charge onto the field, court, and track. Just like our commitment to delivering top-notch vehicles and service, your dedication and passion for the Bulldogs inspire us every day. Visit Tate Branch Auto Group today, either in person or online, because when it comes to supporting the Bulldogs, we're all in. Tate Branch Auto Group, revving up the Bulldog pride. Go Bulldogs! Innovation, service, integrity, and knowledge. J.S. Ward and Son, insurance agency. Auto and home, life and health, personal and commercial. Bonds, too, since 1925, we have the coverage for you. Innovation, service, integrity, and knowledge. J.S. Ward and Son, insurance agency. 
Dean's Inc. of Artesia provides a superior choice for all your electrification, communication, and supply needs with a vision to be the premier industrial electrical service provider in New Mexico and West Texas, providing unparalleled quality in supplies and service with highly skilled and conscious personnel. We pledge to our customers to exhibit the utmost in integrity and reputation while providing superior quality in all we do. Dean's Inc., located at 409 Commerce Road or online at Dean's Inc. Com. Sometimes that dog barking is an Artesia Bulldog preparing for victory. Most of the time, however, it's probably just the family pet asking for attention. Artesia Animal Clinic provides a full range of services for just about any size pet or animal. Our new clinic has been expanded to provide better quality of care, including an in-house laboratory, radiology, surgery, herd health, and more. So the next time your pet looks like they could use some extra care, come by Artesia Animal Clinic in our newly remodeled and expanded facility at 110 West Mahone Drive. Your friends at Artesia Ford Sales have been doing their best to find a great selection of new and quality pre-owned trucks and SUVs so you can get what you need when you need it. While brand new vehicles may be hard to get, there are some great used vehicles out there if you know where to look. That's what the staff at Artesia Ford Sales does every day. Hunt down quality pre-owned trucks and SUVs so what you need is most likely on the Artesia Ford lot right now. Check out the website daily or better yet, stop by and tell them what you're looking for and let them do the hunting for you. Artesia Ford Sales, helping folks get the vehicles they need for over 57 years. This segment brought to you by Artesia Ford. My name is Edric Cario. I'm number 64. I'm a junior. I play O-line. I'm also involved in basketball and track. My favorite teacher is Miss Barley. And my favorite thing about football is the tradition. My name is Kellen Worley. I'm number 65. I'm a senior. I play defensive end. I'm also involved in track. My favorite teacher is Coach Waller. And my favorite football team is the Denver Broncos. And my favorite part about being the Bulldog is the dog pile, baby. My name is Enrique Avendades. My number is 66. I'm a senior. My position is O-line. I'm involved in football, baseball, basketball. My favorite teacher is Miss Walker. My favorite team is the Steelers. My favorite part about being the Bulldog is the dog pile. My name is Garrett Fisher, I'm number 67. I'm a senior, I play O-line. My favorite teacher is Miss Jimenez. My favorite football team is the Dallas Cowboys. And my favorite part about being a Bulldog is the dog pile. My name's Caleb Martin, I'm number 76. I'm a junior, I play offensive line. I'm also involved in wrestling. My favorite teacher is Coach Nickel. My favorite team is New Orleans Saints. And my favorite part of being a new Bulldog is the dog pile. My name is Daniel Aguilar. I'm a senior. I'm an old lineman. I'm also involved in wrestling. My favorite teacher is Coach Anamia, and my favorite football team is the Dallas Cowboys. My favorite part about being a Bulldog is a dog pal. Hi, my name is Joel Crosby. I'm number 79. I'm a junior. My position is O-line. I'm involved in baseball. My favorite teacher is Mr. Taylor. My favorite uh, football team is the Arizona Cardinals, and my favorite part about being a Bulldog is the traditions. This segment brought to you by Artesia Ford. What if you could look forward one year, four years, 40 years? What does the future look like? How will you ignite it? This is where the future gets fueled, where ideas come to life and identities flourish. This is where we define opportunity as individuals and as a pack. Being a Lobo is about so much more than the classes you take. It's about the mark you make on your world. Because the journey starts here, but it never ends. What will you ignite? At H&R Block, tax time is all the time. They offer year-round assistance for personal or business needs. From simple tax questions to bookkeeping, payroll services, and more. You can trust the team at H&R Block to be there when you need the most. Stop by 502 West Texas Suite A in Artesia or call 746-3456 to schedule an appointment. H&R Block, proud to support Bulldog Sports. Se habla espanol. All flowers are in at Sun Country Home and Garden Center in Artesia. Mums, pansies, flowering kale, and more, providing color over the winter into spring. Did you know that fall is a great time to plant cold, sturdy trees and shrubs? The cooler weather makes transplanting less stressful for the plant, and they'll grow great in the spring. 
Take advantage of the September special. 15% off in-stock perennials, shrubs, roses, and trees. Junipers and pines are 40% off. Sun Country Home and Garden Center, 2707 South 1st Street in Artesia. Come see your new truck at Guy Chevrolet Company in Artesia. Right now, save over $6,000 when you purchase a 23 GMC Sierra 1500 with the one and only 5.3 liter V8. Or get interest as low as 0.9% and save $3,250 when you trade in. Plus, you make no payments until 2024. We haven't seen these savings in years. So don't wait. Drive off in your new Sierra and make no payments until after the holidays. Only at Guy Chevrolet Company in Artesia or shop online at GuyChevy.com. GM Financial Financing for well-qualified buyers must take delivery by 10-16-23. Your savings will blossom with share certificates at Artesia Credit Union. Earn 5.5% APY with a minimum $10,000 deposit, 12-month term. This offer is for new deposits only and is federally insured by NCUA. Help your savings blossom with a 5.5% interest rate at Artesia Credit Union. Membership is open to all residents of New Mexico. To learn more, stop by Artesia Credit Union at 210 North 5th Street in Artesia or visit artesiacu.org. Devon Energy is proud to support Artesia High School athletic programs. By partnering with Artesia, we're making an investment in the long-term future of our community. Sports teach discipline, teamwork, and leadership, skills our youth will use to succeed for a lifetime. From our team to yours, Devon Energy wishes you good luck this season, both on the field and in the classroom. Go Bulldogs from Devon Energy. Artesia Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, home-owned and operated for over 50 years, are here for all of your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs. Artesia Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling has the expertise to install residential, commercial, and industrial air conditioning units, including the conversion of evaporative coolers to refrigerated air systems. Cut cooling costs with high-efficiency carrier units from Artesia Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, your authorized carrier dealer. Artesia Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, a proud sponsor of Artesia Bulldogs and our community for over 50 years. 50 years. October is National Cooperative Month, and as a Central Valley Electric Cooperative member, you are much more than just a customer. You're a co-op owner. At CVE, we are here to power your life so you can do all the things you need to grow. We are better when we grow together. It's National Co-op Month, and CVE wants to thank our members for being the heart of the co-op. Thank you for being a co-op owner and a customer of Central Valley Electric Cooperative. Good evening and welcome to KSVP Radio, KSVPTV.com. We are live at the Wool Bowl in Roswell, New Mexico. I say we, it'd be me, Joby Hoddling, and my partner, Robbie Ballou. And Robbie, big game tonight. Start off the district here in District 4 or 5A. Yeah, it's interesting the history coming into this game tonight, Joby, between the Roswell Coyotes and the Artesia Bulldogs. Uh, it's the oldest rivalry in the state of New Mexico. Artesia and Roswell have played each other since 1912 and they've played each other at least 123 times. I didn't go count that. I'm taking the stats for, for what they are on that one. Uh, they were district opponents uh, for 16 years prior to 2000, uh, and not district opponents. And then since the year 2000, the last 22 seasons, they've been district foes uh, going at it uh, for 22 years, and we're going to see it again here tonight. Yeah, it's the first game of district play for District 4 or 5A for these two schools. Last night, Goddard went to Mayfield and played Mayfield High School. The other two in our district, Goddard gets that win. So they're 1-0, Mayfield 0-1. But for Roswell and Artesia, this is the night that they get to see who has the driver's seat and is tied with Goddard. Yeah, in the last 22 seasons with its district foes, Artesia has a 19-3 overall record against the Coyotes. And surprisingly, only these two teams have only met twice in the playoffs. Once in 2006, the Bulldogs won that quarterfinal showdown. And then in 2018, we remember that game. Uh, we were calling it when Roswell won on the last play of the game to win a semifinal game and go on to state championship. Uh, overall, Artesia has 50 wins. Roswell has 72. That's since 1912. So coming into tonight, folks, uh, Roswell scored 305 points on the year. Uh, but three of those games have had a running clock, so they've been shortened. Uh, they have only allowed 44 points in seven games so far as both teams are coming in 7-0, and uh, and they've had two shutouts. Uh, they're mainly a running team. They're 60-40, 60% run, 40% pass. 
Uh, but Manny Fuentes is their quarterback. He is their go-to guy. And uh, even though they're 60% run, Manny has 18 touchdowns on the year with only two interceptions, and he's thrown for over 1,300 yards. So uh, going against that are the Artesia Bulldogs. They've scored 30, 335 points this year. Uh, they've had to run the clock five times uh, this year uh, with the mercy rule in there a couple times. Uh, the Bulldogs have allowed 73 points as opposed to the Coyotes 44. 34 of those uh, came against Cleveland. Uh, the Bulldogs have had three shutouts and held uh, Hobbs and Carlsbad to one touchdown. So coming into the night, Joby, as the uh, teams are getting ready to come on the field, uh, Max Prep, 5A, has Artesia 1, Roswell 2, Goddard 3, Los Alamos 4, and Piedra Vista 5. Coaches Bowl, Artesia 1, Roswell 2, Goddard 3, Piedra Vista 4, Demi 5. And then no matter the classification, and that's why it makes this game the anticipated game in the state of New Mexico tonight, it's because no matter classification, Artesia ranked number one and Roswell ranked number two. So according to uh, statistics and the rankings, uh, you got the number one and the number two teams in the state of New Mexico, no matter the classification, uh, going at it tonight. Yep, big game. You can hear the crowd behind us and in front of us. We have our windows open here at the World Bowl, and Roswell's team just came onto the field. And so the crowd here for the Coyotes exploding. Full crowd here, uh, almost at capacity and probably will be by the time this game is fully going underway. The Bulldogs still behind their breakthrough, the banner, and now they come through it, and you're going to hear the Bulldog fans. So if you're watching here on KSVPTV.com, you can see everything. But those of you listening on the radio, Bulldogs in their orange pants, they earned those a few weeks back. And in their white uh, travel jerseys, of course, the iconic orange helmet, the Rosal Coyotes, all red with white numbers. And their red uh, helmets with the R on the side of their helmets. Uh, just a beautiful night here at the, at the Wool Bowl. Bulldogs win the toss they choose to receive as they unpile from the uh, dog pile. We're about ready to get started. So the Rawls and Kyles coming tonight, very, very confident. As we said, 7-0 and on the year. They've defeated five 6A teams so far this year. And, of course, Rosal and Artesia are 5A. Uh, but they're coming in very confident. They only lost a couple of starters off of last year's semifinal team. So a lot of experience on the field. Uh, for Roswell, not not big. We've seen three or four larger teams this year. By that, I mean bigger players. But Roswell is very good, very well coached by Coach Lynn and his staff, and uh, very well disciplined. And what they do, they do it very well. Artesia Bulldogs coming in tonight, 7-0 on the year. Uh, Artesia's defeated uh, so three 5A teams and some other uh, really good teams. Uh, but they're coming in tonight, very confident, uh, expecting to get a win. So both these teams... Uh, are going to be sizing each other up that this first quarter, Joby. It's going to be fun to watch, and more than likely, it's going to come down to who uh, does the best job with what they normally do, sticking with what they do, and then the coaches' battle that will happen uh, all throughout the game. Yeah, we anticipate both teams will do what they do, both offensively and defensively. I know that uh, they're both well coached, as you've already said. And uh, we can expect, ex expect some fireworks tonight. Um, you know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it was high scoring. On the other hand, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it was low scoring in the defensive battle because both teams have great offenses and have great defenses. Yeah, absolutely. Rawls are going to be kicking off, as Joby mentioned. Number nine, Peyton Kennard, uh, does the kicking responsibilities for the Kyles, and he has a great leg. He can, uh, many times, he can kick it all the way into the end zone, which is an advantage at the high school level, well, at any level, but especially the high school level. So it'll be interesting to see what they do here if they try to get him to kick it in the end zone or do something different. All right, so we're about ready to go. Sice, Duran, and I was trying to see, I think that's Khan back deep. And the quarterback is number 16, and that is uh, Warren. So the Bulldogs kind of playing up, maybe looking for an onside or a little pop fly. The back three are deep, as Robbie said. The kicker, Kennard, can send it deep. And so that may be what Roswell chooses to do is just kick it into the end zone. But on the other hand, they may try something here and get the ball back right off the bat. All right, here comes the opening kick. It is going to be a squib kick. Oh. And it is off of a bulldog, and the Roswell Coyotes will get it. So the first turnover of the ball game goes off of a bulldog front line player. 
So the Coyotes offense, that ball went about 10 yards back behind the Coyotes coming on. Yeah, he kicked it hard and it hit Huffman in his leg and went straight back the other way where Rosal was running from about 11 yards and Rosal fell. I mean, there was no chance to, there was no Bulldogs around it because it went 11 yards the other way. All right, so the Coyotes will come out on offense to start this ball game. They are huddled up with their coach on the sideline. Now the offense will come out. Starting quarterback is Manny Fuentes. Number eight, Bryce Sanchez, a junior, or another senior, is number 22. And they're pretty senior loaded. Uh, Robbie talked about that in the pregame uh, there. But they're going to come out in a pistol-type formation. Fuentes in the shotgun. Sanchez behind him. They've got a wide out and a slot to the far side, which is the wide side of the field. Fuentes brings a man in motion. He's going to fake that, hand it to his running back, and he's got some room to run. He's going to pick up 10 yards. It'll be a first down. Ran that motion across the formation from right to left and then gave it to Sanchez. Going to the right, sealed it off. Wesson got him by the jersey about six yards down the field and uh, got some help to tackle, but not before he had a good game. So a pickup of about 11. It'll be first and 10 at their own 48-yard line as the Coyotes will huddle up. Now break the huddle. Come out in the same formation, but opposite as the wide side is now near us here in the press box. Fuentes in the shotgun. Sanchez behind him in the pistol. Snap is back. He's going to pitch it that way to the short side of the field. He's got room to run again. He's going to pick up about 15 yards. First down, Roswell. Now, what they do is they pull two linemen when and they'll lead the way around the right side there. And they both got their blocks. And Sanchez, boy, he cut up the field and nobody touched him until he's about seven, eight yards down the field. Good play. So back-to-back big gains by the running back, Bryce Sanchez, the 5'10", 200-pound senior, as the Coyotes huddle up once again. First and 10 at the Bulldog 38-yard line. Ball remains on the far hash. They're going to go in their uh, tight set this time where they bring in the receivers and their two uh, slots for uh, wingbacks off the tackle, and they're still in the shotgun. Snap is back. Went is going to hand it off. They're going to run a counter. Bulldogs there this time. Pick up of about three, depending on the spot. So they ran it the other way. A different formation, but they pulled backside guard and tackle. Came left that time, uh, but the Bulldogs able to get some penetration. Sanchez, I mean, he was going up the off tackle that time. Good job by Wesson from his linebacker position. Stepped up and made the tackle. Pick up of two. It'll be second down and eight as the Bulldogs' defense will need to stop hunker down here. They're going to stay in that same formation. Tight formation. Fuentes in the shotgun. Sanchez behind him. They've run the ball three straight times. Fake it this time. Sanchez will roll out. He's looking down the field. He's got a man wide open to the 10. And he will get into the end. Nope. He's down. Nope. Touchdown. I was waiting for the official. That confused our DBs, Robbie. They were not there. He was wide open. Yeah, they faked the sweep to the right. And uh, Fuentes came back to the left at number 11. Abe Toscano was wide open over here as uh, secondary got caught looking for that sweep. Good pass from Fuentes, good catch by Toscano, and dove into the end zone for the touchdown. All right, so with 10-10 left on the clock in the first quarter, PA team, team is down. The pump, the, uh, it was partially fumbled by the snapper. I mean, the snapper kicked, kicked it back to, or snapped it back, but he couldn't get a hold of it. The kick is no good, so 6-0 with 10-10 left here in the first quarter. We'll be right back. The Artesia Historical Museum and Arts Center is now open from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 2 to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Located in the historic Ward Moore House, the Artesia Museum and Arts Center offers information on local and area history. The Art Annex Next Door features rotating exhibits such as local art shows and temporary in-house displays. For event schedule and upcoming social exhibits, visit their website, artesianm.gov slash museum or call 575-748-2390. The Artesia Historical Museum and Arts Center, 505 Richardson in downtown. Town Artesia. All right, welcome back. Great start for the Roswell Kyle Robbie. They get that turnover and then they go down and score. Yeah, that scoring drive took only four plays to cover 63 yards. Uh, capped off by the 36 yard touchdown pass from Fuentes to Toscano. The kick was no good. So, with 10 minutes and 10 seconds left here in the first quarter, uh, Roswell leads six to nothing. And the officials talking to the coaches on the Roswell side. I couldn't tell what he was asking, but the kicker wasn't out there yet. <laughs> so the kicker, now he's on the field. He's going to put it on the 40-yard line, but not in the middle where we kick it from. And I failed to say that a while ago. He's got it on the on the left hash that they're facing. They're going, Roswell going from the south to the north. Bulldogs, of course, 
north to south, and they got that onside kick, goes right off one of our up guys on the front line, so they get that turnover to start the game. Uh, my guess is they'll probably try to do go at us again with an onside kick. We'll see. Here it comes. It is an onside kick. It goes through the hands of one of our up backs. He better get on it, and he finally does. <laughs> Almost nonchalantly there, Robbie. Yeah, that's a hard kick. I mean, Kennard's kicking that very, very hard, and it went past the front line to Finley, went right through Finley's hands, and then he fell on it for the Bulldogs. So it'll be first and 10 at the Bulldog 31-yard line as the Bulldog offense now on the field for the first time. And no, no time went off the clock there. Does that yeah. still say 10-10? That's weird. And yeah, they didn't start the clock. All right, so the Bulldogs come out and trips to the wide side, which is the far side ball on the near hash. Running back, of course, for the Bulldogs is right to the right of Estrada. That's Galindo. Snap is back. Estrada looking. He's going to roll to his left away from pressure. Here comes the penalty, and that pass is incomplete. And that's going to be in the area of holding, but we'll see two flags come in. Yeah, it looks like Ricky Armendariz may have uh, been guilty there as Aiden Rutley uh, was trying to rush into Estrada, and Ricky got called. That will back us up. It is a 10-yard holding penalty, so it'll be first and 20 for the Artesia Bulldogs. The Roswell had four down linemen and one linebacker in the middle. Had five in the box. They widened the two uh, outside linebackers out. So basically had uh, five guys, four guys rushing. Everybody else fell back into coverage. All right, the Bulldogs break the huddle. Ball remains on the near hash. First and 20 at their own 21-yard line. Going to go trips again to the wide side of the field. This time, uh, Galindo to the left of Estrada snap is back. He does look to throw. Steps into it, and it's going to be caught downfield for a pickup of about 24, maybe 25 yards. First and 10 Bulldogs. That's a great route by Kahn because uh, they they dropped eight into coverage that time. Only rushed three, and Estrada found him uh, about you know over 20 yards down the field. Kahn broke off the route and came back and got the ball. All right, so the Bulldogs are ready to push the pedal down, but Estrada does call him into the huddle real quickly. It was a pickup of 24, first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. They stay in the trips to the wide side, which is the far side. Snap is back, and turn, fake the handoff, throw it out there, and it's going to be caught by Kahn, looking to make men miss, and then he's going to be wrapped up after a two-yard gain. Good job by the Coyote defense. Just that screen coming in towards the line of scrimmage that time with Kahn, and he broke one tackle before Quisada, number three, got a hold of him, and some other Coyotes came in to help. So it'll be second down and eight for the Artesia Bulldogs as the uh, majority of the offense does huddle up. They're going to go trips to the near side, which is now the wide side of the field. Again, the Bulldogs going from left to right on your radio dial, north to south. Second down and eight as Estrada has Galindo to his left. Snap is back. He's going to look to throw once again. Going to throw it out to the left side, and there is going to be a pickup and down the sideline, and finally tipped out of bounds at the 39-yard line is Galindo. <laughs> Glendo just flares out to the left. We have trips on the right. Throw it to him. And, man, there was three coyotes out there, and he got by all three of them out down that sideline, but one just barely got a hand on him, so off balance. Got him off balance, and he just went out of bounds. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bulldogs at the coyote 39-yard line. Trips again to the near side, which is the wide side. This time empty backfield. So Galindo is going to be a, sh a slot right off of the tackle on the left side. Estrada in the backfield by himself. Three down linemen. Estrada comes into motion back next to, and he's going to turn to hand it off to him for the first time in the ball game. Picking his way through traffic, going to pick up. They're going to only. He's only going to pick up one yard. So it'll be second and nine. Good job by Noah Land there on the defensive line, number 71 for the Coyotes. Galindo, they kind of held him up. He was looking for a lane. And uh, when he finally found one, he tried to get through it, but Lynn was there and made the tackle. All right, this time Estrada goes over to uh, Coach Moppin on the sideline to get a play. He's going to come back into the huddle here, and they're all going to huddle up, all of the Bulldogs this time. Second down and nine at the 38-yard line of the Roswell Coyotes, and now we see the standard A formation, a slot and a wide on either side. Lindo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. They show blitz. They do not bring it. Four-man rush. Estrada looking. He's got a man. That's Con. Oh, when he dropped the ball. Good defense. Con running that post route just over the middle. He had a step on uh, Nichols. 
but uh, the, as the ball was getting there, Nickel reached in with the left hand and knocked that ball out. So great defensive play by number 14. Ball was a little behind him. It was on his back hip, and that helped the defense. But you're right, a great defensive effort there. So it's going to bring up a third down and nine on the incompletion. Boy, if that had been a little more out front, uh, there was nobody there. There was no safety back helping. Well, he was only a step behind him. Yeah. All right, so third down and nine. A formation look. Rosal with four on the line. He's going to turn, hand it off. we got a false start. So it's interesting, Joby, right? Last year, go back and watch last year's game. Boy, the Bulldogs, everything went their way the first the part of that game, and uh, we were up 22 to nothing before the Coyotes could turn around. And uh, this year, right, they have the, the kick that goes off Huffman, and they get it. They go down and score, and Bulldogs are driving here, but a couple of penalties, you know, uh, well, actually on them that time, but we'll see how the Bulldogs uh, can, can keep this momentum, if they can keep it here. Well, and I was watching the white hat, but for some reason that penalty is escaping me. He did this right here on the on the en encroachment. Okay, that so that's what it was, encroachment. That corner out there, and I thought that while ago, he's up on him again really tight. Number 25, snap his back and turn, fake the handoff, going to throw it out. That's going to be a first down to Casadas. Before he gets tackled, he makes uh, five yards, first and ten Bulldogs. Uh, Casadas in that slot position on the left, just a quick throw. They're backed off of him a uh, good ways and get it in his hands, gets the first down for Gallegos, comes up, makes the tackle for the Coyotes. First and 10 at the Roswell 28 yard line, ball remains on the far hash for the Bulldogs. Duran will stay out there. And now the Bulldogs, they'll stay in the A formation. Look, Casadas will be tight right off of the, to the left of big Ricky Amandadas. All right, Galindo to the left, now to the right of Estrada. Snap is back, going to hand it off to Glendon. No, he faked it. He's going to throw it deep. He's got a man, and it's going to be knocked down. He's just a little behind Duran. Yeah, Duran had a step uh, as he blew by Cardosco, number 16, and uh, the ball was just, uh, he had to wait on it just, or it, it wasn't there, but uh, it would have been a touchdown if the ball had been there. So that'll bring up second down and 10 for the Bulldogs on that incompletion. Boy, he threw that, and Duran was behind number 16. And then he just ran right by him. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. All right, so it'll be second and 10 as they stay. And now they come back out and trips to the near side, which is the wide side. Galindo to the right of Estrada and shotgun. Three down linemen. They're going to stay back in that. And they're going to throw it over to number 10. Sice, he catches it at the 20. He's thrown down at about the 16. Pick up a 14. It'll be first down. That's just a clear out. A pattern right there. The two inside guys run goes. Sice and from the wide out receiver position just cuts a runs a slant across the middle and good throw, good catch, good pick up. First and 10 at the 17 yard line of the Coyotes. A formation. Galindo to the right of Estrada. Turn, hand it off to him. He's got a little bit of room. He bursts through it and picks up about five yards. Maybe four. We'll see where they spot it. Yeah, Bulldogs a uh, little out of balance right now. Throwing the ball a lot, but they give it to. Uh, Glendo that time goes up the middle. Great house, number 66, making the tackle for the Coyotes. So it was a pickup of four. It'll be second down and six for the Bulldogs at the 14, 13 yard line of the Roswell Coyotes. Ball near the middle of the field as they break the huddle. Going to stay in the A formation. Galindo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. Four down linemen, now four linemen up on the line. Going to look to his left. Going to throw the stop route out there, and it's going to be caught. Pick up of about four. It'll be, oh, he dropped the ball. Yeah, that was Diego Lopez that uh, just ran that out route. He caught it. Good, good hit by the Coyote. Couldn't get his number, uh, but they called it an incomplete pass. So incompletion brings up third down and six for the Bulldogs. Again, at the Coyote 13-yard line as they'll huddle up once again. Six to zero. Roswell leading the Bulldogs with 6.03 to go here. In the first quarter, if you're just now joining us, to the packed house here at the Wool Bowl on a beautiful October night. A formation. Galindo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. He looks over the defense. Snap is back. Looking. He's got a man over the middle, but he was held the whole way. And is there a penalty flag anywhere? No flag. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, so what's happening is they're they're doing press coverage up really tight on the Bulldog receivers, and they're getting their hands on them. Khan 
broke inside and uh, Quintero, number 17, just held on to him and would not let Khan get away from him. Khan was behind him, but he held on to him and so the throw was long because he was held. Yeah, that was looked fairly obvious, but no penalty. So from our standpoint, we're a long ways away. All right, so fourth down, see if they try to get them to jump off sides here. Empty backfield, Estrada looking over the defense. Snap is back, there is a penalty. Uh, offsides, they got into the neutral zone. Yeah, that's that press coverage, right? They're trying to get as close to our receivers as they can so they can't get a clean break off the line. And uh, that's twice now they've been in the uh, inside the zone, the encroachment zone. So it's fourth and really short. It was a, it was a uh, long five. And so it's fourth and less than a yard. Bulldogs right back on the ball. A formation look. Snap back, turn, hand it off to Lindo. He fumbled it. I don't know if he got it back. If he did, I think it's a first down. We'll let him on pile, Robbie, but that was just a run right up the middle. I think yeah. he got enough for the first down. Yeah, Galindo fell on the ball. So we'll see. Wow, that is close. They are going to measure it. To me, it looks like it's almost to the seven yard line. They only had to get to the, uh, just inside the eight. So Galindo got that handoff and went to the left. And it looked like, I mean, there was nothing there. It kind of ran into back of somebody and I couldn't tell if that did it or if somebody reached in there and knocked that ball out. Uh, but it got to the ground and he just dove on it. All right, so this is gonna be a big call here and it will be well, they got to hold it. Somebody, that ref let go of it. Not supposed to do that. It's going to be short. Short, turnover on downs. Roswell football inside their 10. All right, so that's going to put the Bulldog defense on, on the field, and they need to uh, step up this time. They saw the Coyotes the first time. Only took them four plays to go 63 yards and score, so... Uh, the defense needs to stiffen up here and hold the Coyotes to help the offense out. I tell you what, the official let go of that chain. He's not supposed to. I don't know if it caused anything. It looked like, of course, we're a long ways up here, but it's turnover on downs. So the Coyotes offense will be back on the field here in the first quarter with 5.50 to go, leading 6-0 to zero over the Bulldogs. Bulldogs look a little bit confused on offense. Our defense here, they've got trips tight over there. They're gonna turn, hand it off to the big running back. He's through the middle. Bulldogs ran around some blocks that time, Robbie. That's not good. No, they're pulling those backside linemen just coming up. It's not a sweep. They're pulling them and then turning up field and picking up some linebackers. Uh, so just a good, good hole for Sanchez to run through. So he picks up quite a few. He's out to the 19 yard line. So a pickup of about 12, first and 10 for the Coyotes. As they'll break the huddle, going to go in that tight formation on the right side, which is the short side. Number 18 way out wide with uh, Hammond on him. Snap is back, going to run the exact same play, the exact same result. He gets a pickup of about eight this time, maybe nine. Yeah, so the Bulldogs are in a five-man front with one middle linebacker. Rodriguez is stacked behind him, uh, watching probably Manny Fuentes. So... Uh, Rosal Lyons doing a good job of locking up with our five down linemen right now as uh, he ran through an arm tackle of a lineman that tried to reach out that time. Second down and a short one as the Coyotes break the huddle in the same formation. 18 way out here spread. We got this uh, turn handed off. It's the same play and he is hitting the backfield this time. That will be a no gain. Yeah, Caden Grantham came off that left side. Uh, and they changed it up that time. The Bulldogs did. They had a 52 defense. Rodriguez was on the left side over there. Caden Grantham came around there, uh, just ran around the offensive lineman and hit him in the backfield. So the same exact yardage. They need a little less than a yard here as they're going to huddle up or come out of the huddle this time. Fuentes will go under center. Man in motion is number 30. They tried to draw the Bulldogs offside. Didn't work. They'll reset. 30 will go back. To the X back now in motion, going to turn, going to hand it off to the big man. He is hit, but he drives forward. I think he got the first down. Yeah, it looks like he did. As you said, well, a couple of Bulldogs hit him, but boy, he had his pads low and kept those legs moving. Sanchez did. Did a good job of uh, falling forward to get that first down. Pickup of about two. It'll be first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. 
3.54 and counting here in the first quarter. Rosal leading 6-0 to zero as Fuentes goes over and talks to his coach. Now back in the huddle. They'll break the huddle, and they're going to come out here with a slot and a wide out to the near side, a wide receiver to the far side. Sanchez behind Fuentes in the, or, yeah, Fuentes in the shotgun, going to turn, hand it up, fakes the handoff, going to throw a slant. It's going to be behind. Not exactly sure who was uh, going to. It's between two receivers. Yeah, number 20, uh, Segala was on the left wide out receiver position, and then uh, Estrada was in the slot, and it was kind of thrown in between them. Uh, I, they were both open. That's the concern. <laughs> yeah, luckily it was not two either one of them, kind of yeah. like you said, between them. The number 13, Estrada, is their speed guy at slot position. They, he is really fast. All right, second down and 10 on the incompletion. They're at their own 30 after the turnover on downs by the Bulldogs. First offensive series. 6-0 to zero, Roswell. Fuentes in the shotgun. Sanchez behind him. Going to turn and hand it off. He's going to break through with nobody hitting him until down the field. Pickup of about six. Uh, just, uh, again, a give on the right side. Got through there. Watkins from the safety position. Comes up, hits him low. Made a good open field tackle on him. Third down and four for the Coyotes at their own 36-yard line. As Fuentes will hustle back from the sideline after talking to the coach. Getting his marching orders. He'll give those in the huddle. As they break the huddle, they're going to have uh, two white, uh, a slot and a wide out to the near side, plus an X back. Fuentes in the shotgun. Sanchez behind him in the pistol. He's going to look to throw. Bulldogs break in. It was a screen pass, I think. It's going to be caught. And uh, getting down the field, he's tripped up at about the 43, 42 yard line. First down, Coyotes. Let me get his number. Is that 19 or 18? That's number 18. I don't think he was throwing to him. I really don't. There was two Bulldogs right on him. He was throwing it to a guy on it looked like it's standing there, and he broke across in front and grabbed that out of the air and was able to pick up the first down, but I really don't think Fuentes meant to throw it to him. Yeah, I honestly thought we might see a pick, and then when I saw him throw it, I was like, oh, here comes a guy out of nowhere for Roswell. Yeah. So first and 10 after the seven-yard pickup. At their own 42-yard line, that bunch set, they got uh, X back and a wide receiver, I mean a slot on either side. This time, 50-22 is hit in the backfield, and he will go down. Diego Wesson that time, he came through the hole and grabbed him and slung him down, and then some things were going on after the play there. There's a flag on it, but great job by Wesson. We had some penetration by the defensive line that time too. So a flag came in late. There was a little bit of extracurricular. It's interesting to me to see who it was on. I think it's on the Bulldogs, but they haven't said yet. Yeah, it's going to be on the Bulldogs, so a Personal foul, says the White Hat, on the Bulldogs. Pick up 15. Instead of second and 10, it'll be first and 10 at the Bulldog 42-yard line. Yeah, so what we saw is Wesson got him down on the ground on his knees, and he got excited and uh, was showing some emotion, and you hate to see uh, the ref step in on that one because he was just showing some emotion. He wasn't taunting. He wasn't doing anything that we could see. Yeah, there was a hit oh, on behind. Somebody else came in? Well, he got, he stood right back up, and the Bulldog okay. did, did hit right. him. I missed that. All right, so first and 10 at the Bulldog 42. Fuentes in the shotgun. He's dropping to pass. Bulldogs get a little pressure. Going to throw it down the field, and that's going to be caught. First down inside the 10-yard line at the 6. David Hammond had great coverage on him, but uh, number 10, Palombino, did a great job of timing his jump, went up in the air and pulled that ball down for that huge gain for the Coyotes. So just man-to-man -man out there. I've been saying it several times where they've had that wide out way out there, and Hammond's the only one out there with him. He was running with him, but unable to break it up. First and goal at the Bulldogs' six-yard line. There's a minute 27 and counting left here in the first quarter. Roswell leads 6-0, going to run, run the sweep this side, a pitch, and the Bulldogs meet him at the line of scrimmage. He will pick up one. Good job by Diego Weston again. He just closed on him uh, as a sweep to the left and wrapped him up and got help from other Bulldogs. So it'll be second and goal at the Bulldog five-yard line. Down to getting under a minute here to go in the first quarter. 6-0 Roswell. They'll line up in a tight bunch formation once again. This time Fuentes will go under center. Sanchez in the three back right behind him. Man in motion, going to turn, fake the handoff, go the other way. Bulldogs are there. They fumble. They turn it over. Uh, let's see. Bulldogs get it. Amandadas. I tell you, he reached in the Rafael Orozco, number 52 for the Bulldogs. Got some penetration. He reached in there, stripped that ball, 
And then when it was on the ground, Armendariz fell on that ball for the Bulldogs. Huge turnover uh, for the Bulldogs on that one. And that's a great fumble recovery by the Bulldogs. Don't fumble away a great deal on your next truck or SUV. Fall on a great deal with Perry Connor at Artesia Ford Sales. All right, so with 42 seconds to go in the first quarter, the offense for the Artesia Bulldogs gets the ball back on a big stand there by the Artesia Bulldog defense, getting the turnover. First and 10 at their own five-yard line. Ball on the near hash. They're going to go a formation look. Standing at the goal line is Estrada. He's got Galindo to his right right now. Now he's going to switch it over to his left. Down to five seconds on the play clock. Two seconds. They better get the snap oh, off. Gosh. Snap it. They did get it off in time. Going to throw it down the field, and it's going to be a oh, little too long. Going to it hard was Duran, but couldn't get there. Yeah, Duran, boy, he just came uh, like a post route across the middle of the field. And, boy, Estrada threw that up in the air. Duran tried to go catch it. I'm surprised with his speed that he couldn't. Number 16, Carrasco, was there. But if he caught that, Duran was gone. All right, 16 seconds left here in the first quarter. 6-0 to zero, Roswell. Bulldogs at their own five-yard line with a second down and 10. Galindo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. A formation look, but tight. No, they yeah, they say formation look. Snap is back. He's going to look, look, look. Now he's going to hand it off on a draw. Galindo breaks the tackle. He's to the outside, out of the way. First down, pick up to the 18-yard line. Boy, just a draw play there, and that was great patience by Estrada as he waited and waited, then handed it to him before uh, Eli Lynn made the tackle for the Coyotes. So I mislooked at the clock. We're under 25 seconds now as he hands it off to Galindo again behind his offensive lineman going to pick up about five maybe six yards okay that line's getting a push now that they didn't get that first series as uh, they got a good push Galindo gets through there and picks up some good yards we're going under 10 seconds will they try to run another player go to the second quarter Estrada over there talking to coach and now he's going to drop back out but that's going to end the quarter Roswell Coyotes lead the Bulldogs six to zero here as we head into the second quarter Live from the Wool Bowl, KSVP Radio, AM 990, FM 93.7, KSVPTV.com. We're on YouTube and Facebook as well, KSVP Radio. Thanks for tuning in. Second quarter coming up. At Richland Motors, it's never been easier to sell or trade your current car, truck, or SUV for a newer model to hit the road in. Even if you don't purchase from Richland, they want to buy your vehicle for top dollar. But if you do buy from Richland, don't forget, they're the home of the powertrain warranty for life. That's a whole lot of confidence for you. See Richland for details, 2nd and Sycamore, and 1309 Southeast Main. All right, welcome back here to KSVP and KSVPTV.com. Robbie, pretty good first quarter. Um, Roswell came to play. I think the Bulldogs did too. Turnover on downs by the Bulldogs and a turnover on the kickoff, the first kickoff of the ball game, and then the Bulldogs get a turnover. They strip the ball down on the goal line, so they get the ball back. Yeah, it's about what we anticipated. We talked about it coming in. That both teams have the confidence they think they're going to win this game if they execute their game plan. Uh, I would give the momentum to the Roswell Kyles there in the first quarter, uh, but that f hopefully that fumble there at the end uh, got the momentum back for the Bulldogs and see them go down and score and drive on this, this uh, series. So we're going to start the second quarter with the Bulldogs second down and six at their own 22-yard line. All right, second down and five, sorry. Glendo with, is to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. Going to turn, hand it off to Glendo, looking to get around the outside corner, which he does, and burst forward to about the 29-yard line for a first down pickup. So... Bulldogs should be doing that because they got five men in the box. They're daring us to throw the ball, I mean to run the ball. Uh, so Glendale that time just with his speed goes around the left side and uh, Cordosco number 16 puts a hit on him. First down and 10 at the 29 yard line of the Bulldogs. They were on their own five when they got that turnover. So they've gotten out of that being down inside the uh, 10 yard line. Trips to the far side which is the wide side. Snap is back. They bring the blitz this time. He's going to throw it deep. He's got Crosco running hard. He cannot get to it. That's the difference tonight, Joby. I'm just going to say it. First series, we had a guy in the end zone that had a step on his defender, and I just missed him. We missed Duran on this series just earlier, just, you know, a, a foot or two in front of him. And that time uh, we had a guy open and overthrew him. So just a little bit off on the deep balls tonight, which is unusual for Estrada. That'll bring up a second down and 10 at their own 29-yard line for the Bulldogs. They break the huddle, the ball on the near hash. They got trips to the far side. Galindo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. 
Beauregard on the near side. I believe it's number 84. Roswell playing off. He's going to turn and throw it to uh, is that 85. Yeah, that was Khan. He's hit immediately. Picks up about three. Yeah, well, they got press coverage on the out, uh, that trip. The two outside and uh, Nichols, number 14, is about 10 yards off of Khan. So they just threw it to him real quick. But Nichols came up, made a real quick tackle, but he picked up four. He did pick up four. I said three, but he picked up a four. So it'll be third down and six back in the A formation. Look as uh, Galindo to the right of Estrada. Third and six at their own 30. Three yard line. Snap is back. Looking to pass. Steps into one. That's a first down pickup on the far side. Two. Who is that? That's Con. Con. Pickup of about seven. First and ten. Yeah, just a uh, good route over there on the sideline by Con. Quick snap throw by Estrada. Con brings him in with his hands. Picks up the first down. So good timing by both of them. So the Bulldogs at their own 39 yard line. First and ten. We're in the second quarter, and the clock has stopped. With Back to running, 10-40 and counting. 6-0, to zero, Roswell with the lead. Trips to the near side, which is the wide side for the Bulldogs. Galindo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun as he takes a look over the defense. They brought five on that last play, and the Bulldog offensive line picked everybody up. This time they only rushed four. Estrada looking, looking, looking. Now he's going to have to run away from pressure, and he will run down the field. He's going to pick up almost 10 yards. Let's see where they spot him. Pick up of nine. So you mentioned that right before that, and I was just thinking that, boy, Estrada's had time in the pocket to throw so far tonight, and that time <laughs> it was great coverage because he had four seconds or so before he felt the pressure to take off and run. They brought four that time, so the offensive line really picking everybody up for Roswell so far. Trips to the near side, Galindo to the right of Estrada, second down and one, turn, hand it off. Galindo follows up inside. He'll pick up two, three yards. It'll be first and ten Bulldogs. Yeah, just a run and play. Good job by the line. Got to push again. Uh, Galindo uh, gets, uh, picks up the yards for Eli Lynn, makes the tackle. So it'll be first and ten at the 49 on the, on the Roswell side of things. Great crowd here tonight. Just a completely calm, beautiful October Friday night here under the lights at the Wool Bowl. They've got a crane over here holding the American flag, a big American flag off to our left here in the press box, and not even a, there's just barely a slight breeze. Trips to the near side, ball near the middle of the field. Galen, uh, Estrada in the backfield by himself. Galindo goes to the slot on the right side. Now he's going to bring him back to him in motion. Ay, ay, ay. So we got a false start, illegal motion. Yeah, so what you want to do against the Bulldogs, you want to eliminate the big play. You want to make them drive it down the field, drive it down the field. Uh, but Roswell necessarily hadn't done that to us tonight, as we've talked about. We've had some open guys deep. We hadn't hit them. Uh, we, but we haven't had that big play yet. All right, so the false start. Really, uh, false start brings the Bulldogs back five yards. First and 15 now on their side at their own 46. Again, Galindo in motion. Going to fake the pitch to him. They're going to throw a screen. Going to be caught. But they, oh, he breaks a tackle, does Casadas. He gets the five yards back. Boy, his helmet almost got ripped off his head. Yeah, well, that took, screen took a long time to develop because Cazados was going left to right, cross formation. He got caught up in the traffic. So Estrada had to wait on him. But as you said, boy, Roswell Kyle came through there and got his hand on the back of his helmet, almost ripped that helmet off. The other thing that happened is the offensive line, there was a Roswell Kyle that came through our blockers. Nobody touched him, and he uh, just, uh, Casados was able to shake him off and get five yards. Uh, but he should have been tackled for a loss. Good job by Casadas. A formation. Estrada takes a snap, looking to throw. Going to throw it over to the right side, and that's caught by Kahn. Pickup of about five. It'll be third down and five. Yeah, pitch and catch for the Bulldogs. Just that standard route we like to run. Uh, trying to get his number over there. Number 25 hit, hit uh, Kahn immediately, got him out of bounds, and that's uh, Jerome Moriel. 8.26 to 8.26 to go here in the half. The Bulldogs third down and five at the Herm. Carls or at the Roswell Coyotes 44-yard line. I got to grab it's Herm. It's a J, but it's Herm, not oh. Germ. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, Herm. All right, so we're going to be in an A formation look. Coyotes showing a blitz. Let's see if they bring them. Oh, they're off sides. That'll be first and ten Bulldogs. They yeah, do jump. Coyote defensive linemen are pointed at the Bulldog offensive lineman and the two line judges are going to get together and talk about it. The far line judge threw the penalty and he said it was offsides. This near line judge was saying, wait a minute. If there was a, oh no. Wow. The one how do you throw that? 
Yeah, either you saw them offsides or you didn't. The other one runs in and says, no, they must not have been offsides. The other one says, okay. So, yeah, that, that one's tough. All right, so it'll, be, it'll remain third down and five. I don't think I've ever seen an offsides overruled. <laughs> well, and maybe he thought he touched someone. Maybe they thought they'd come across and touch one of our guys. But it, he, anyway, who knows? All right, empty backfield. <laughs> Wide side has three. The short side has two receivers. Estrada in the backfield by himself. Ball on the 44-yard line. He takes a snap. He's looking. They only bring three. He rolls to the right side. Now he's going to have to get away from pressure. And he does. He's still looking down the field. He's going to throw it. And that is incomplete. Boy, he, I'm not sure what he was looking at there, but uh, no reason to throw that one, but it did. So it'll be fourth and five. Well, Estrada went to, he sat there in the pocket, rolled to his right a little bit, only rushed three, so the lineman handled him. And then nothing there, so he came all the way back to the left, trying to hit Galindo on the sideline over here. Galindo tried to keep his uh, feet in bounds, unable to, and he shook up a little bit on the sideline over here, so he's going to have to take a seat. For at, least, or for at least a play. Yeah, they called the timeout for him, so an injury timeout. We'll have to have another Bulldog come in for him. And the Bulldogs treating it like a regular timeout. They're over there talking to the whole team. Unless he called timeout. All right, we're going to take a timeout as well. We'll be back after this timeout. Hawker and Sons of Artesia, a company specializing in excavation and construction, is proud to support and provide construction services to the people and businesses of Eddy County and the surrounding area. With their expert knowledge of the industry, Hawker and Sons is well equipped to offer. Had to break. In. Had to break into that. Uh timeout as they came right back on the field trips to the near side he tried to call him offside now a timeout taken by coach Moppin. i'm confused what just happened robbie well it was an injury timeout both teams came to the coaches the white hat blew the whistle and called them back in and uh, got them back on the field all right we will take a timeout now stay Hawker and Sons of Artesia, a company specializing in excavation and construction, is proud to support and provide construction services to the people and businesses of Eddy County and the surrounding area. With their expert knowledge of the industry, Hawker and Sons is well equipped to offer top level service and professionalism to all oil field businesses, commercial and private parties with excavation and construction needs. Call Hawker and Sons today at 575 365 3175 or visit their website at Hawker and Sons. Com. Go Bulldogs. All right, a big down here coming out of the timeout. Fourth and five. Bulldogs have trips to the near side. Para, I believe, is in the at the tailback position beside Estrada in the shotgun. Snap is back. He's going to run the speed option. Pitch it. Para's going to get tackled. That will be a pickup of about two turnover on downs. That wasn't even, I mean, that, that play had no chance because they played that so well. The Coyotes did. Uh, they took Estrada, made him pitch the ball, and then uh, three Coyotes hit Parra before he was even close to the first down. So great job by the Coyotes. So the turnover on downs will put the Roswell offense at their own 44-yard line as the defense for the Bulldogs back on the field. There is 7.59 to go here in the first half. 6-0 to zero, Roswell is our score. And the Bulldogs had too many players on the field. Somebody is off now, finally. In that tight formation, running back behind Fuentes. Turn to hand, fake the handoff. He's going to run a pass play. He's going to throw it. Man's open. He's going to be cut down at about the 49-yard line of the Bulldogs. Nope, he's going to get the first down at the 48. Peyton Kennard coming all the way across the formation. And they had a step or two on his defender, Hammond. And so made a good catch. Hammond made the tackle, but not before, as you said, he got the first down. First and 10 at the Bulldog 48-yard line. The Coyotes huddle up. Fuentes in the shotgun. He's got Sanchez behind him in the uh, pistol. Tight formation. Fuentes takes a snap, turns, hands it off, and nip in the middle and picking up about nine yards is Sanchez. Well, they're doing a good job. Like I said, the offensive line for the Roswell Coyotes, boy, they're just stealing our defensive lineman, and he's immediately getting to the linebackers, Sanchez is. And by the time he gets there, he's already got three or four, you know, yards, and then he's a load once he gets there. So we second down and four after the pickup of six. The ball on the near hash. We're in the second quarter, 7.25 and counting. Six to zero, Roswell with the lead. 
Fuentes will be in the shotgun. Got the little bunch set here to the near side. One receiver to the far side. Hammond out there on him. Sanchez behind Fuentes in the pistol. Snap is back. Going to turn and run it that way. Bulldogs, nobody was out there. He pitches it. Sanchez around the corner. He's still on his feet to the 25. And he's inside the 20 pickup of a, of a bunch. It'll be first and 10 at the Bulldogs 17-yard line. Nice speed option to the left. Fuentes did a great job of holding on to that ball until the Bulldog committed onto him. Pitched it to Sanchez. And, you know, for 205 pounds, he's got some really good speed as he got that corner and went up the sideline. Well, the Bulldogs were out of sorts there, Robbie. There was no one. There was no one. One linebacker got out there, nobody else. The corner was running with the receiver, so there was no corner to come up and, and hit the uh, pitch man. So he was by himself running down until he got deep into the secondary. Bunch set again. Fuentes in the shotgun. He puts uh, Sanchez behind him. Going to turn, fake the pitch. Oh, there was a hold. A tackle. Going to throw it into the end zone. Touchdown, Roswell. <laughs> So Fuentes, they fake the run to the left, and uh, he rolls to his right, and he throws and finds number 12, Mitchell, in the end zone uh, with a couple of Bulldog defenders there. But as you said, Huffman uh, came in from his linebacker position, and the offensive lineman grabbed him under the shoulders and just did a takedown on him, flipped him, uh, and took a t <laughs> did a takedown on him, but it wasn't called. All right, so lining up for the PAT, it's now 12-0. to zero. Roswell with the lead. Waiting on the snap. There it is. Better snap this time. Kick is up, and the kick looks good, and it is. So with 6.24 to go in the first half, the score 13 Roswell, 0 for the Bulldogs. As the seasons change, it can be a great time to refresh your oral health, too. Here's a few fall tooth care tips from Smile Expressions in Artesia. Fall is a great time to switch out your toothbrush. Toothbrushes should be replaced every three to four months. With fall coming comes fall baking, which means lots of sugar-laden treats. In addition to the goodies, try reaching for fruits and vegetables that are rich in fiber. And as the end of your insurance year approaches, now could be the perfect time to take advantage of any unused dental benefits. Please call and schedule your appointment today at Smile Expressions in Artesia. Welcome back here to the Wool Bowl. Joby Hoddle and Robbie Blue on the call as the Roswell Coyotes take advantage of the second loss or turnover on downs. They drive down the field and they get a touchdown. The extra point is good, and it's 13 to 0 as they now line up for the P or for the uh, kickoff. But the kick was no good. Boy, I misread that. I thought I watched them put their hands up. So no good, Josh tells me. 12 to 0, Roswell. I can't see the scoreboard, so I need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. 12 to 0. The kick was no good. All right, that scoring drive took four plays, covered 58 yards. 17 yard pass from Fuentes to Mitchell. Uh, the kick was no good, so the score is 12 to nothing. Roswell over Artesia. Bulldogs back up into their normal uh, return. They've kicked it hard. Both times they've kicked it, the Coyotes. First one was a turnover. Going to do it again. It's going to go back. This time it's caught back there on the bounce. And then bursting forward and being stood up at the 20, at the 35-yard line was a Bulldog return man. Yeah, that's Finley over there again. Did a good job fielding that cleanly. End over end kick. And uh, picked, it up, picked up what he could. Gabriel Castro, the first Coyote there to put a hit on him. All right, so the Bulldog offense will come out onto the field with a uh, pretty good field position at their own 35-yard line, down 12-0 to zero here in the first half. Break the huddle, ball on the far hash. Going to go into the A formation, and uh, Galindo is back on the field, so he'll be to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. Snap is back, turn, hand it off to Galindo. He sneaks through traffic. He's to the 40, to the 45, to the almost to the 50 before he's drugged down. Pickup of about 15. That's a great job by the Bulldog line there because he just got behind them going down the field. Slowed him up a little bit before Aiden Rutley got a held on his, his foot or Galindo would have been gone. All right, it'll be first and 10 at their own 49-yard line. A formation look again, turn, hand it off to Galindo again. He burst into the middle this time, stacked up after a pickup of about three. So just coming back with that same play, letting him try to find a lane, pick a lane, and nothing quite there this time. So pick up of a couple. And I said three, but it was a pickup of two. So second down and eight on the 49-yard line of the Roswell Coyotes as the Bulldogs partially huddle up. Going to go trips to the near side, which is the wide side. Duran will be the farthest out. 
as uh, Frosco and Khan will be the two others on this near side. Man in motion is Lindo. He'll stop to the right, going to turn, hand it off to him again. This time he's through the middle, and he will get the first down plus all the way down to the 40-yard line of the Roswell Coyotes. Boy, Lindo hit that hole hard. I mean, he was past the lineman before they even knew what happened. Number 32, Molinar, uh, hits him, but Glendo just kind of lowered his shoulders and picked up more after Molinar hit him. Bulldogs going to go ahead and huddle up with 5.05 and counting to go here in the first half. First and 10 at the Roswell Coyote, 40. 12 to 0, Roswell on top. A formation look, a slot and a wide out on either side. Glendo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. He stands at the Coyote 45 yard line. Snap is back. A little bit high. Looking down the field. He's got a man. It's going to be caught. Oh! In and out of the hands of Khan. Bulldogs have had their, uh, they've really had their way with the deep ball tonight, Robbie, but we, we're not connecting. And then when we do, we drop the ball. Yeah. So second down and 10. Because that time, the ball was right on spot. The, we've had some balls behind. We've had some balls out in front. And uh, that time was right there, but just goes in and out of the hands. He had his man beat. We've seen our receivers get deep on the Coyotes, but as of yet, we have not completed one of those. Second down and 10, A formation look, ball in the far hash. Glendale to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. Snap is back, turn, hand it off. Galindo follows his guys up in the middle, still on his feet. He's going to pick up about seven yards. It'll be third down and three. But just a good run up the middle, offensive line. Uh, I think they figured a couple things out over there on the sideline with the coaches, and they're picking up good yards now. Uh, Noah Lynn, number 71, first one in on the tackle. We're in the first half. We've got 423 and counting to go, 12-0 to Roswell over the Bulldogs. A formation look, ball in the far hash. Glendale to the right of Estrada in the shotgun as he looks over the defense. Third down and four at the Roswell 34. Fakes the handoff, throws out to the wide receiver screen. He's going to get close to the first down, and then he's going to be knocked back. Depends on where they spot him. Pick up of about three and a half. It'll be fourth down. I think that's Brown over there that caught that uh, coming inside, and they're going to run another play here as they're short. Need one yard here. All right, Bulldogs right back on the ball. Snap is back, hand it off. Galindo has a first down and more. He's going to get about six yards on the play. First and ten, Bulldogs. That's good hard running by Galindo because a couple of uh, defensive linemen kind of got a hand or an arm out there, and he just ran right through them to pick that up. First and ten, Bulldogs right back on the ball. We've got 334 and counting to go here in the first half. Bulldogs have not scored. Unusual for them, one of the highest scoring teams in the state. Great defense here by the Coyotes. Going to throw it over the middle again. It's going to be caught this time. It was low, but going down and getting it was Khan. So I was going to say, Khan dropping that pass earlier. It's the first time I remember him doing that because he usually makes catches like that. He had to go down to the turf and, and catch that ball. Great catch by Khan. Right back on the ball, 319 to go. Snap his back, turn the hand off. Galindo picking his way. is inside the five before he's bounced around, and he's going to go down. Ball came out, but he was already down. Whistle had blown. Where Galindo just does not quit. He got hit, kept the legs driving, broke for that. But some more coyotes came in there, and he broke off of those. And But I tell you what, those guys are coming in there trying to strip that ball every play. Doing a pretty good job stripping at it. For, uh, second and goal at the three-yard line. Oh, the Bulldogs, false start, dog on it. Ah. That'll stop the clock. It was on the right side of the offense. Yeah, something happened there. They picked up the tempo, right? We're going no huddle right now, just putting the pressure on that defense. And uh, messed, uh, some of the linemen messed jump that time as they got the count wrong. So it is a false start on the Bulldogs. It'll back them up to the uh, eight-yard line. It'll be second to goal from the eight for the Bulldogs. Two fifty to go here in the first half. And they do roll the clock. Trips to the near side. Lindo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun as he looks over the defense. Snap is back. Going to look to his right, look to his left. Got a man in front of him. Now he rolls away from it. Estrada's going to have to just throw it into the end zone and get it out of there. And it's yeah. going to be an incomplete pass. And that's what he needed to do was throw it away. Or that would have been about a 15-yard sack. Yeah, doing a good job. That's a senior quarterback for you right there. I uh, don't know that he would have done that last year, but nothing there. Threw it in the 
you know, out of the end zone over the right side over there. So it's only third down and third from the, I mean, third and eight from the goal. I can't say it. Third and goal from the eight yard line. <laughs> so we got two plays here. All right, so they're back in the huddle. Con and Sice over on the right side. Is the break huddle going to be the uh, Carrasco and the Rand to the left? Galindo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun as they're in the A formation look. Taking his time, looking over the defense. Snap is back. Throws it, and that's going to be dropped in the end zone by Carrasco. Hits him in the chest. Ball bounces out. Fourth and goal. Yeah, that's the kind of night it's been right now for the Bulldogs. Uh, we don't normally see drops like that. We've seen a couple here that were touchdowns already on this drive. Uh, just a little off tonight are the Artesia Bulldogs. Fourth down and eight. 2.26 to go here in the first half. 12 to zero, Roswell. That's fourth and goal at the eight. Like Robbie said, I need to get that right. Can't get a first down, just got to score. Galindo to the right of Estrada. Snap is back. They rush five. Estrada rolls away from pressure. He's just going to have to muscle in. He will not get in. Turnover on downs. Let's get, will get the ball back. Now, let's give the Coyotes credit there. I mean, they, they had a lot of pressure on them inside the 10-yard line. And, uh, you know, they did a great coverage. We did have Carrasco open the drop. to the great coverage on that play as there was nobody there. Estrada rolls to his right and just decides to run it, but the Coyotes hold him short. So the second, third turnover on downs by the Bulldog offense. First and 10, uh, and we got an injury timeout. There was a Roswell player on the ground. 2.17 to go in the first half. 12 to 0, Roswell leading the Bulldogs. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back. There really is no one quite like you, and no one quite like the ones you love. At Turpening and Sun Mortuary, they take pride in providing families with the best service possible. The phrase, we make it personal, is not just a tagline. It's the way they conduct themselves every day as they honor the ones you love in their own unique and special way. Located at 611 West Grand in Artesia. Visit ArtesiaFunerals.com to learn more. Turpening and Sun Mortuary, proudly serving our community and your family since 1954. Roswell staff still attending the young man that's down at about the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Coyotes at their own four-yard line with 2.17 to go in the half. And Robbie, the Artesia Bulldog offense, you said something, and I'm going to agree with it. You said they're just a little off tonight. Yeah, I mean, Bulldogs, as we talked about, they've scored 335 points in seven games uh, and, and held scoreless right here in this first half. But it's not necessarily because we haven't had the guys open. It's not – not that they're not moving the ball. We just haven't uh, connected on those plays yet. Uh, but you got to give Roswell credit, right? They've only allowed 44 points this entire year, this entire season. And we're seeing that great defense that Roswell has too. Yeah, we are. And so the Bulldogs hope are going to maybe get a turnover here and get a score here late in the half or at least stop them. But Roswell gets the ball back to start things off in the second half. And right now they lead 12 to zero with 2:27 to go or 2:17 to go here in the first half, and so they're helping the young man off the field. It's number 15 for the Coyotes. It's a deal. It's a deal. So he is uh, now off the field. The Roswell offense will break the huddle from the sideline and go on out. The Bulldog defense out there. That's where you want your secondary just to to be patient, stay back, right? No big plays here. He's All right, they're in their tight. they're in their bunch set. Quarterback is going to go under center. That's Fuentes. Sanchez behind him. He'll turn. Hand it to Sanchez right up the middle. He bounces around. He'll pick up about two yards. It'll be second and eight. Boy, it's getting nasty down in those trenches right now, Joby. I mean, that was just uh, everybody going at it. And uh, Sanchez trying to find a lane that, that wasn't there. So, But it's getting pretty nasty down there. And Actually, did they, get, did they get a full three yards? Might have. So it's going to be second and a long six or second and se uh, seven I'm s s they're going to go with the receiver to the far side and under center will go Fuentes snap back he's going to turn pitch it Bulldogs were not out there ready for that he's going to pick up the first down all the way out to about the 15 maybe yeah the 15 yard line well, that's a great job by uh, Finley for the Bulldogs he had a receiver on him and Apodaca is coming around there with great speed, and he he got rid of that blocker and made the tackle and Apodaca out in open field. 
128 counting to go in the half as uh, Fuentes comes over and gets his play from Coach Lynn, and now he breaks the huddle. First and 10 for the Coyotes at their own 15-yard line. Fuentes again will go under center. Man in motion, 13. He hands it to him, trying to get around that corner. Bulldogs trying to stretch him out. He does get around the corner. He's going to pick up first down and get out of bounds after a pickup of about 12. Yeah, Armand Darris has that corner over there, and I'm watching through the binoculars. And, uh, boy, his jersey got stretched big time on a hold so he couldn't seal that corner off. There's just quite a few calls being missed right now. I mean, I'm, on both sides. I'm just telling you, fans, on both sides, but they're not being called. First and 10 for the Coyotes at the 26 yard uh, at their own 26 yard line as we have 102 left here in the uh, first half I looked at yours and it was right I was like that can't be right well, you've been looking, so I'm not Yeah okay I got you <laughs> All right snap is back turn hand it off Sanchez up the middle got a lot of room to run he's tackled in the secondary after pick up a 12 yeah, a huge gap in the middle of that time. They hand it off to him for also calls timeout. Armanderas and uh, Rodriguez make the tackle, but not before that big gain. Timeout taken. We're going to take one as well. Stay right here. Bulldogs 0, Roswell 12. Mac Energy Company is working to develop today's energy with tomorrow's technology. Technological advances in recent years have presented new possibilities for exploration. We strive to utilize these advances and stay abreast of innovative technology to ensure that our company is a forerunner in the quest for energy for many years to come. But more importantly, Mac Energy Corporation is committed to being an advocate of the communities around us. We invest in community initiatives that focus on youth, education, and innovative projects that address local issues. To learn more about Mac Energy, our affiliates, and our commitment to our youth and community, communities, visit us at mec.com. Okay, it'll be first and 10 for the Coyotes at their own 37-yard line. 38-yard line. Coming out of the timeout that they took. 56 seconds to go here in the first half, and Roswell leading 12-0. to They're going to go some formation I don't think we've seen yet tonight. Trips to the near side. Twins to the far side, which is the short side of the field. Fuentes in the backfield by himself. Bulldogs look a little confused defensively. Fuentes takes kind of a deep, almost five yards. He's going to take the snap. Looking to this side, he's going to be hit a man wide open. And he will get out of bounds. Pickup of about seven. Interesting, just to prevent defense from the Bulldogs there as they had trips, and all three of our guys are 10 yards off their receivers. They hit Estrada over here. He runs to the sideline for pickup six. So 49 seconds to go here in the uh, first half. It'll be second down and four after that pickup of six. Ball in the near hash. They're going to go trips to the far side, twins to the near side. Again, the Bulldogs playing way deep on the second man in the rotation over there. Snap is back. He's going to look that way. Goes across the middle, wide open. Down inside Bulldog territory. Pick up all the way down to the 37-yard line of the Bulldogs. Apodoc again from that inside slide on the trips. Just finds that open zone in the middle and uh, hits him on the run. Good pickup for the Coyotes and timeout again by the Coyotes. Um, let's see here. All right, well, we'll keep it right here as the Bulldogs. Okay. As the Bulldogs are going to have to toughen up here, Robbie. There's, uh, is that right? 42 seconds left. 42 seconds. Roswell on the drive, and they got a good kicker. I mean, he's missed his PATs, but I know he can kick it long. Yeah, I watched uh, against one of the teams. He kicked a 38-yard field goal in one of the games, and it made it by 10 yards. So yeah. he, he does have a good leg. Uh, but at Roswell, I guarantee you right now, they're thinking touchdown. Yeah, they're not thinking field goal. They're no. thinking touchdown. They've started it inside the 10-yard line in the shadow of their own goal line with just over two minutes left after the Bulldogs were unable to get in for the touchdown. And now... They've driven down the field. Trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Fuentes in the backfield by himself once again. As he takes a look over the Bulldog deep. Boy, we're playing deep off of the, our guys. He's looking, looking. We only rushed three. He's still looking to pass it. Now he's going to throw it back across his body, and it's caught inside the 20-yard line. Pickup of about 16, yard, 16 yards down to the Bulldog 18. And that's a, just a great throw by Fuentes. I mean, Toscano open over there as they're lining up quickly here. 
He's going to go under center. Is he just going to? He does. He just spikes it. So it'll be second down and ten at the Bulldog 18-yard line. They're out of timeouts. Is why he had to do that. So that's the kind of night it is right now, right, Joby? Everything's working for the Coyotes, and and that's great for them. I mean, this everything they're trying, what they're doing, it's working out for them. And and the Bulldogs again, as we've talked about, everything's a little bit off right now. Whether you want to attribute that to the Coyotes or not, that's just how the night's going. All right, back in the shotgun, trips to the far side, ball in the middle of the field, twins to the near side, Fuentes taking a look over the Bulldog defense, three down linemen, Bulldogs looking like they're going to drop back in coverage, which they do, they're going to run a screen to this side, it's going to be caught by number 18, he gets by, pickup of about eight. Wesson, boy, he just, he kind of got sucked in there and then he came flying out of there as that was, uh, looks like number 18 for the Roswell Coyotes that caught that, and I don't have him on the roster. All right, it's third down and four. It was pick up a six. I said eight, but they, where he's knee touched, now they're going to well, well, kick Phil go here, aren't they? I thought they were out of timeouts, but they were not. So a timeout called by the Coyotes. So Coach Lynn led that run down to 3.2 seconds, probably with the intent of going for the field goal. Is that 3.2 or 32? 3 .2. Yeah, it's 3.2 seconds. 3 .2. Yeah. Well, the Bulldogs have a lot to talk about at the half, Robbie. At the, if, if they just get their normal throw and catch back on, right now they're leading 21 to 12. You know, so Roswell has played tremendous defense. Bulldogs have been a little bit half a bubble off, as we said. And then on offense, the Roswell Coyotes have just been driving pretty well against the Bulldogs. Their running game being very effective, and their passing game maybe even more effective. All right, so uh, they will line up for the uh, field goal and try to go in 15-0 to zero at the half. They do get the ball coming out in the second half, so they'd be great. They want to score here if they can. Number nine is their kicker. 18 is holding. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up, and we had a something all timeout taken by the Bulldogs right before the kick. Was that good? I couldn't tell. Yeah, it was good. It would have been good, but they take a timeout, so do the Bulldogs. So trying to ice the kicker. Goddard wins last night. They defeat uh, Mayfield over in at the Field of Dreams in Las Cruces. And I think that score is 27 to 14. Was that the score? Do you remember? 28-13. 28-13. Yep. yep. So the Goddard Rockets right now 1-0. Mayfield 0-1 in our district. And I guarantee you all the coaching staffs are here from those schools watching this game as they're scouting us tonight, as I'm sure we had some over there scouting them. But, uh, Joby, just, uh, I mean, really an exciting first half of football here. Obviously, we're, we're Bulldog fans. We don't like being down by 12. But, man, I, I just think for these crowds and for the football teams, it's been a hard-fought first half against high-scoring offenses. They're used to scoring a lot. They haven't. And uh, some great defensive play by both teams tonight. All right, so they'll line up for the field goal with it being third down. If it doesn't go three, of course, there's only 3.2 seconds left. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up. And the kick is good. So we will go into the half with the score 15 to 0, the Roswell Coyotes over our Artesia Bulldogs. Hey, Artesia Bulldog fans, are you ready to unleash the spirit of victory this season? Tate Branch Auto Group is proud to stand alongside the Bulldogs as they charge onto the field, court, and track. Just like our commitment to delivering top-notch vehicles and service, your dedication and passion for the Bulldogs inspire us every day. Visit Tate Branch Auto Group today, either in person or online, because when it comes to supporting the Bulldogs, we're all in. Tate Branch Auto Group, revving up the Bulldog pride. Go Bulldogs! Of all the flowers in the world, pansies get a bad rap. Hi, this is Jim Gill with Roswell Seed Company. The name pansies sound delicate and weak, but in reality, pansies are bold and beautiful. When the frost has killed all the other flowers, pansies start blooming and they'll bloom all winter long, which is why you should come see us at Roswell Seed. We have a greenhouse full of colorful pansies ready to brighten up the coldest winter day. So come get your pansies and remember, if someone calls you a pansy, take it as a compliment. 
Hello folks, Martin here from PRMI and Artesia, your hometown lender. Have you been on the fence lately about purchasing or refinancing a home? I know it's a big decision and the interest rates are playing a huge part in that. I'm here to let you know I understand your concern and would like to talk to you about your options. There are financing products available that may suit your budget and I'm the person to talk to. I offer a personal service, fast approval process, and a knowledgeable support staff. So call me at 575-749-6278 and let's discuss your options. PRMI NMLS 3094 is an equal house. Housing lender. Home health care is health care in the comfort of your own home when you cannot care for yourself. Home care services can help someone who has chronic health issues, medical setbacks, or health impairments. J&J has the best skilled nurses and therapists for any of your special needs. So why pick a stranger to care for those you love when you can pick your beloved neighbor with over 25 years of experience? J&J Home Care is here for all your home care needs. Call us now at 575-746-2892 or visit us at www.jjhc.org. The Artesia Police Department wants to remind you to lock up your vehicles, take your keys with you, and never leave valuables in your vehicle. If you're looking for a rewarding career in law enforcement, the Artesia Police Department is looking for you. The department is currently hiring certified and uncertified officers. Take advantage of a great retirement plan, paid leave, and medical benefits. Apply in person, online, or call 575-746-5000 for more information. The Artesia Police Department is an equal opportunity employer. And please always remember, don't drink and drive. Kane Electrical Supply is your number one distributor when it comes to the top of the line inventory. Kane Electric carries name brands such as Appleton, Burndy, Fluke, Cooper Lighting, Hoffman, Phillips Lighting, iDeck, Klein Tools, and Square D. Kane Electric has your professionals and will assist you with any information you may have on electrical supplies. Kane Electric delivers on location too. Come by Kane Electric today in Artesia at 1911 North Rose Lawn. Welcome back to the Tate Branch Halftime Show. What a game we have been watching so far. Artesia and Roswell at the Wool Bowl. We'll be back to the second half in a moment. But our fan of the week this week is Mr. Royce Pearson. Royce, thanks so much for doing this. Well, I'm honored to be here, Gene. I, uh, I kind of secretly hope that somebody might get me on this sooner or later. But I'm delighted to be here. And whoever nominated me, I really appreciate it. That's great. Well, let's find out a little bit about yourself. Are you a native artesian, born and raised here? I surely am, Gene. I was born in uh, 1957 here at the old Artesia General Hospital. Okay. And uh, parents are, were, were uh, Raymond and Carol Pearson. They're both deceased, but uh, raised on a farm out here, Cottonwood area. We had uh, raising hay and cotton and whatever else, livestock. And, and Perry Troublefield standing over there is a very dear friend of my brother's, and he's a dear friend of mine as well. Yeah. So uh, you grow up here, you get to play sports, I'm guessing. Uh, looking at your size and build, you probably played a little football for the Bulldogs. <laughs> yes, sir, I, I did. Blessed to be a part of the Artesia football program, and uh, they settled. I didn't get to play a lot of defense after junior high. They, they settled me in on the offensive line. Blindside tackle, or we called it tough tackle. Okay. And yeah. uh, who were your coaches uh, when you were playing? Uh, Mike Phipps, Vernon Nasbill, T.W. Harvey, Charles Norton, Mike Allen, and uh, Ronnie Maskew. Okay. And you probably got to play in a state championship game or two? I got the opportunity as a senior to play. We played Deming. Uh, for the state title. That was the year we dropped down from, uh, back then it was 4A was the, the big school classification in Artesia or in the state. And uh, we dropped down to 3A due to uh, student enrollment. But we also saw a legend leave town, LG Henderson left and went to Alice, Texas after uh, a two and eight season my junior year. Mm -hmm. But he was successful in Alice, and uh, I always thought, well, if you can't, LG was such that maybe if we can't compete at the highest level, it's time for me to move. <laughs> that was always my theory. But. Yeah. Well, and uh, I think Mike Phipps took over after that, and Mike had a lot of success with the program, and we were well familiar with his career. After high school, what did you wind up uh, going on to do, Royce? Well, after high school, um, I went on a football scholarship to Eastern New Mexico University, and... Um, Things didn't work out there after my first year there, and then I transferred to Texas Tech. 
and graduated tech in 1980 with a, a business administration degree. Okay. And you come back to Artesia, did you start a family here and uh, follow some more kids through the Bulldog program? <laughs> yes, sir. I, I came right back to Artesia because at the time uh, I had hired with uh, Halliburton. And uh, with Halliburton had a big yard here in Artesia, I said, it just makes sense that I go home. So that's what I did. And, and uh, Marion had two children, Rebecca and Ryan, and they're 30. What? <laughs> 34 and 31 now, Rebecca being the oldest. Uh -huh. And uh, she's blessed She's blessed me with two uh, grandsons. They, they live in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, and you get to follow them as, uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you've also served the community. You've been, uh, I know, county commission, You uh, and, and you held some other roles uh, that help serve our community. Well, I, yes, I... Uh, uh, served uh, city council, uh, well, county commission four years, and I guess the city council was ten years, mm -hmm. and uh, enjoyed my public service and all the folks that I came in contact during that period of time. Sure, and then you continue to work with the kids in the schools. Uh, mm -hmm. After this interview, you're getting ready to go take some cheerleaders uh, <laughs> to some place. Yes, sir. Uh, counted up. Kate Asbill contacted me and asked me, how many years have you been driving an activity bus? And counted up seven years. Mm -hmm. And uh, tonight I do get the opportunity to take the cheerleaders to Roswell. Okay. And uh, how much enjoyment do you get driving those activity buses? That's got to be a lot of fun, uh, especially on the way to, maybe not so much on the way back, depending on the outcome, right? Well, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's always amazing to me. A lot of times the kids, they, they compete, don't always win. And even when they lose, they get back on the bus and have a good time. I recall when if we'd gotten uh, beaten bad, maybe in a football game or whatever, we didn't dare get on the bus and, and say a word for that matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's all meditate on what we did wrong and let's do better next time. That's right. Now, was that the same when you were a student and a player, and has that carried forward uh, even to today? Well, student player, and, and I still see that discipline with the kids on the football team, varsity football team. Uh, and, you know, it's a thing where you watch junior high kids that don't know quite how to operate on the bus, but they learn, you know, as we go. Uh, we have rules about trash, and we have rules about noise in town, and they don't they don't follow along too well when they're younger but they learn as they go along it's been a real blessing to these guys here on this football team this year i've watched them come up since they were in eighth grade yeah. so and i know they're a special group of young men and i've been running around telling everybody they're one of the best teams our teachers ever had and i, I really believe that well, we're going to find out about that tonight. It's going to be a good game, yeah. uh, whatever. Did I also remember correctly, did you also do some umpiring in your <laughs> career? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I had six years that uh, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, do football, officiate football, baseball, softball, and uh, Dan Lewis even talked me into doing a little basketball. <laughs> uh, be quite an experience. I, I can't do that. That's too much running, but anyway. <laughs> Do, do you actually hear, like especially as the umpire, do you actually hear what the people are saying in the stand? Uh, you're supposed to have rabbit ears, but you do hear what they say. <laughs> well, hopefully it was all, good job, Royce, way to go, great call. Yeah, I, and I always tell them I appreciate your opinion, but it's my judgment that ca really counts. That's right. That's, that's exactly right. Here's a mask, here's a, here's a ball and strike counter, give it a try. <laughs> you might have to do that. Yeah. Looking back, uh, do you have any fond memories, any particular games when you played uh, a high school, any particular games or moments that, that still stand out in your mind today? Well, uh, I tell you, uh, being a part of, of, of the team, be a senior year especially, uh, we set out like any other team to be state champions. And uh, we, uh, as I stated earlier, dropping down into a 3A classification, we beat Portales 61 to zero, Lovington 51 to zero, Tucumcari 48 zero. So our defense was not scored upon. Wow. And I remember uh, a lot of us were on the sidelines, especially in a Tucumcari game after the first half to allow some of the younger players to, to get some experience. 
But uh, then we went on into the good old quarterfinal game with Tularosa, and we went in way overconfident. Uh-oh. And we went into the locker room 23-6 to six behind. Oh, no. I, yeah. I, bet, I bet nobody was happy at that time. Bob Cerny was the coach over there, and he had coached here in Artesia. He coached us at the junior high, and he, he knew us. And um, <laughs> I recall Coach Phipps telling T.W. Harvey, uh, they got the ball first on the 20-yard line. Of course, Larry Combs always kicked it into the end zone, bring it out to the 20. Coach Phipps said, T.W., get me that ball back real fast. The first play from scrimmage, Tularosa went 80 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> and T.W. looks at him and says, is that fast enough, Coach? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, true story. <laughs> uh, I yeah. could just imagine the look on Coach Phipps' face when yeah. he heard that. <laughs> yeah, is that quick enough? <laughs> now, now, for the fans that may not remember, did Artesia come back and win that game? We did. I recall that our coaches didn't. We don't know what to tell you guys. Alan White, Greg White, our quarterback, Greg White, his dad, he said, I have plenty I'd like to say to him if you would allow me to. <laughs> So he gave us a really great uh, halftime pep up talk, I guess you'd call it, but uh, it was fiery. It was, it was full of passion and you guys got to wake up, go out there and play like you're capable. And we go out there and uh, we win 24 to 23. Wow, what an exciting yeah. uh, exciting game. And then you go on to win the state championship. Yes, yeah, I'll go on to the quarterfinal with Aztec, and then we went on and uh, with Deming for the state title, and we played all three games in Bulldog Bowl. Wow. So we were fortunate. That's right. Well, this game's at the Wool Bowl tonight. Then we're back home for Goddard and Mayfield and the first-round playoff game, and who knows what happens after that. But uh, it's a, it's a great thing to be a Bulldog. Right? Yeah, it's a great it's great to be a Bulldog. What Coach Montregon always says, it's always great to be a Bulldog. That's right. Well, we have a couple of gifts for you for being our uh, guest on the program today. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, Tom and the folks at Adobe Rose. Oh, this nice. a $50 gift card <laughs> that we like to give there to you go. there. So you are welcome to uh, nice. enjoy that. Thank you, Tom. And then uh, we've got from uh, Tate, Tate Branch, Branch. here, uh, Orange Mug. It says Tate Branch Fan of the Week, number I one have, Bulldog I fan. I have admired these. <laughs> from afar as i have watched your various i watched jeff bowman not long ago and uh, mike phipps was interviewed i watched that one and several others so did you stick with the jeff bowman interview because i was wa that was the 53 to nothing game at santa Teresa. Yeah. game was done at halftime and i watched the audience numbers while jeff was talking just keep going down and down Dropping, and down yeah, yeah. I pretty much watched watched the whole thing uh, good, good. yeah jeff was a senior uh quarterback uh, when I was a sophomore, and, and Cooper Henderson was also a senior that year. And uh, they had they had the team that could have won a state title. I really believe that. We had the city uh, problem where the city workers went out on strike, and it went beyond the strike. It got it actually got ugly in our community, and I think it created a lot of divisiveness on that football team. So Well, it... Uh Got it turned around and everything. Uh, we, we have a great program to talk about. Oh, yeah. That was kind of a dark spot and probably wish I hadn't mentioned it, but that's what happened. It's, it's history, yeah. so uh, it, it's there. Well, tonight, history is going to be made. The number one team in all of New Mexico and the number two team in all of New Mexico doing battle. And there's a lot of folks thinking that they'll be meeting again mm -hmm. in a few weeks in the Bulldog Bowl yeah. and uh, could very well happen. I see it happening, and, and I just uh, I printed something in Facebook. Nooney, uh, Rodriguez has a son that plays in the secondary, and I just made the comment about being overconfident, been there, done that. And I know our coaches have them prepared to play. You just don't want to go in there. And they're aware of how good Roswell, Roswell's football team is. Yep. So, so we'll get the second half rolling in a minute. Yeah. Royce, thank you so thank much. You, Appreciate dude. you doing this. Thank you so much. And we've just we've got a few more weeks of the season left. If you've got a nomination, reach out to Perry here at Tate Branch. And who knows, they may be next week's fan of the week. Thanks for joining us. Second half is coming up next. Check it, check it, check it, check it out. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. General Contractor. 
Wow. I know. Who cares, right? Well, you should care. You see, a licensed roofer can install a new roof on your home, but really can't handle structural problems. Uh, and here's a chance with Trustmark Roofing and Windows, and here's what you should expect during your window inspection. Upon my arrival, you receive a 15-minute courtesy call letting you know I'm on the way. Once I'm in your home, I'm going to be checking for moisture indication, functionality, and any kind of energy efficiency improvements to the inside and outside of your home. After my inspection, I'll give you my professional opinion, and then you can decide whether you want a no obligation quote. Myself or the office will contact you to set up a date when I can show you my products and options to best suit your needs. So when choosing windows, choose Trustmark Roofing and Windows. Our goal is to give you a five-star service and get you what you deserve, and that's the best. Production LLC strives for excellence in all of our operations. We encourage all of our employees to be great members of our community and encourage you to join them in supporting all of our athletes, students, teachers, and administrators. Buckhorn Production LLC, proud to support the Artesia Bulldogs. This October, Artesia General Hospital is here to help you take charge of your breast health. About one in eight women in the U.S. will develop breast cancer. Understanding your family history and getting screened can help lower your risk and lead to early detection. They're pleased to offer advanced 3D mammography, providing increased early detection, more accurate results, and enhanced comfort. Don't wait. Request your mammogram today. Women over 40 don't need a physician's referral to schedule their annual screening. Visit ArtesiaGeneral.com forward slash mammogram. Forest Tire, mile after mile, we've been with you for almost 80 years. Nowadays, it seems like nothing is built to last. Phones, appliances, cars, computers. But the new Michelin Defender 2 tire is designed to outlast. With a quiet and comfortable ride, you'll have the confidence you need on the roads, whether they're wet or dry. So goodbye to short-lived and hello to something that lasts. Forest Tire, keeping you rolling since 1944. Check it, check it, check it, check it out! Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. Here are your halftime stats tonight uh, for the Roswell Coyotes. They have 16 first downs, 17 rushes for 124 yards, nine receptions for 155 yards, 155 yards passing. Artesia Bulldogs, 12 first downs, 16 rushes for 92 yards, 11 receptions for 96 yards, 11 for 21 for 96 yards passing. Uh, your leaders at halftime uh, for Roswell, rushing Bryce Sanchez, number 22, 14 rushes for 104 yards. Estrada, one for 11, and Apodaca, two for nine. Uh, passing for the Coyotes, Fuentes, nine of 10 for 155 yards and two touchdowns. Leading the way, receiving for the Coyotes is Toscana, two for 57 and a touchdown. Palomino, one for 36. Estrada, two for 22. Mitchell, one for 17 and a touchdown. And then you got Kennard, one for 10. Uh, your leaders for the Bulldogs, rushing Galindo, 13 for 76. Estrada, 2 for 14, and then Ibarra, 1 for 2, passing. Estrada was 11 for 21 for 96 yards. Receiving, uh, leading the way is Khan, 6 for 58. And Galindo, 1 for 14. Sice, 1 for 11. Cazadas, 2 for 10. And then Brown, 1 for 3. So those are your halftime uh, stats uh, for the Bulldogs and the Coyotes tonight. Thank you, Josh, for those stats. And... Um Something that's uh, pretty unique this year for the Bulldogs, Robbie, is no score for the Artesia Bulldogs. Yeah, Josh and I were talking at halftime, and neither one of us can remember the last time the Bulldogs were held scoreless at half. So uh, that is unusual for the Artesia Bulldogs. Just couldn't get just couldn't get everything going the way that they wanted to, and Roswell playing great defense. Um, that factor, you know, I didn't know. I don't know how they would be ranked in the state. They're ranked number two overall, obviously, but as far as their defense goes, their defense playing really well. Uh, Bulldogs defense playing pretty good, too, because Roswell's used to scoring a lot more points than this, but they do have 15 on the board with two touchdowns, two missed PATs, and one field goal right there at the end of the half. And so the Bull, uh, Roswell Coyotes leading the Bulldogs 15-0. to 
Yeah, I think at halftime, the Bulldog coaches go in there, and they've got to, uh, for me, uh, give the Bulldogs a couple of challenges on that. One, the defensive line has got to get off some blocks. Um, they're just being and blocked, and Sanchez is getting to our second level right away with those lead blockers on the run. Second thing is uh, both sides of the ball got to pick up the intensity. Uh, we got to get more. Roswell's playing more intense than we are right now, and football's a game about that. And so uh, we've got to pick up the intensity and st stay under control but pick it up. And then we've got to stop the run, Joby. Uh, they, they've moved the ball up and down the field. You heard the stats. they got 280 yards already offense so far. And then mainly I'd love to see some three and outs. We didn't see one three and out from our defense. They're playing well, as you said. But, man, if we could get some three and outs, get it right back in our offense's hands, and then our offense can execute uh, the way we know they can, uh, this game can be turned around really quick. Yeah, it's only it's only a two-touchdown lead here for the Coyotes, but uh, Bulldogs definitely not being used to be, being down at all this year. And, in fact, they've only been down – I'm not sure if they've been down at all. I can't remember. It seemed like we were ahead of Cleveland the entire game, just staying right in front of them. Um, here come the Bulldogs onto the field, and I think they will come out here with a, with a, some halftime adjustments, as you pointed out. The Roswell Coyotes not on the field yet, but they're getting ready to come out. Big crowd here on this uh, beautiful Friday night, for Friday night lights. Lights, uh, of course, on here at the Wool Bowl. And you can hear in the background there, you can hear they've got some music, something going. It sounds like motorcycles revving up. I don't know what that is. Uh, they got cop cars over there by the field house where they're coming out, and they got the lights and sirens going, but I don't know what. Yeah, it is motorcycles down there. They got four of them just revving their engines. Yeah, so it's kind of overtaking our sound here. <laughs> what we can hear. The Bulldogs are on the field warming up. Big, big crowd here. Uh, Bull Bowl near capacity, if not at capacity. And so it's it's everything was built up to be. Number one versus number two. It's low scoring, 15 to zero. That to me is the biggest uh, surprise is the Bulldogs have yet to been able to put some uh, score on the board. But like we've talked about all half long, Robbie, give kudos to Roswell as they're playing good defense. They've had a little bit of a bend, but don't break. The Bulldog defense not playing quite that good, although they've been a bend, but not break too much. Um, here come the Coyotes, or at least I hear the crowd getting up, so I think they're coming out on the field, and there they come. Yeah, so the Coyotes going into half. I think uh, Coach Lynn and his staff say, guys, great first half, but it's over. It's done with. you got to come out with that same intensity, if not more, and then you got to execute just like we did, keep this thing going, and uh, you're going to win a game tonight. So I don't think they, they don't have to change much or adapt much. I don't think the Bulldogs do either. It's not that they have to change a lot. Uh, they just need to uh, execute better on offense and defense. And as I said, I think the Coyotes, that first half, they outplayed the Artesia Bulldogs. Well, the Bulldogs still warming up over there. Um, how much left on the – so fixing to have the kickoff here, though, is down to about 10 seconds on the clock up there. So Bulldogs will be kicking here to start the second half. The Roswell Coyotes uh, will be receiving. That will be the first time we see that tonight because the Bulldogs received the first half kick and did not score – so we didn't have to kick to them. We also have not seen a punt in this ball game by either team. Bulldogs have turned it over twice, and they turned it over twice on downs, maybe maybe three times on downs. The Roswell Coyotes have turned it over one time and one time on downs, and there's your difference. Roswell scored on their other three possessions. The Bulldogs have not scored on any possession. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if the Coyotes, they like to run the starburst, so we'll see if the Bulldogs kick it deep to them. We do remember that huge play last year towards the first of the game where the Bulldogs got down and busted up that starburst uh, just with the speed and the high kick that Parrish has. So we'll see what the Bulldogs do here and what the Coyotes respond with according to the kick. So both teams still on the huddle on their sidelines. The clock is set to go here. The officials waiting in the middle of the field. Neither team has hit the field yet. Now the Coyotes do. Bulldogs still in their huddle over at the 40-yard line. Kickoff team comes out for the Bulldogs now. So Parrish will line it up right on the X, as he always does. The Coyotes have kicked from the left side, the left hash each time that they've kicked the ball. And actually, he doesn't put it on the X this time. First time I've seen it all season that he hasn't. So 
to the left of it a little bit, kind of cut in the middle between the X and the hash. Josh was laughing. Yeah, because I thought he would put it right on the X. I look up, and he's moved it over a little. Well, he's looking to the right side over there to kick it on their right sideline. They got number 11, uh, Toscano, over there. He's dangerous, dangerous player. Here comes the kick. With the second half has started, it's going to be deep. It's going to bounce over the head of 16. He catches it at the 10 over his shoulder, and the Bulldogs will get him down inside the 25-yard line. So that's Carrasco that fielded that. That's a great job because it kind of went over his head, and he was running backwards and uh, able to catch that. First Bulldog there was uh, Marco Soto uh, for the Bulldogs to make a tackle. So first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Good return. The ball kind of was flat. It didn't go real high, so and it was a line driver back deep, so he caught it at the 10 and had plenty of time to make it up to the 25 before he was met by the wave of Bulldogs. First and 10 at the Roswell 25-yard line, going from the north to the south are the Coyotes to start things out here in the second half. Fuentes in the shotgun. Looking for the snap. He takes it, going to run the uh, speed option. Bulldogs again, nowhere near it. 22's to the 40. He's to the 45, almost to the 50-yard line is Sanchez. Say what's happening on that play, right? Our corners are not reading run pass. They're out here on the receiver, and the receiver takes off, and they're just running, kind of running with them. It happened on the other side in the first half, too. Uh, we've got to start reading run pass and just come up and play that run. The only issue I see with that is that they could stop and throw it right over the top. Well, they got to read run pass. I know. I agree with you. I mean, that's, it's it's I'm just, basic football. It, yes, it is. <laughs> All right, so they're going to be in the shotgun again. Tail back behind him is Sanchez. But snap a little high. He gets a handoff, breaks the first tackle, and he's going to run about six yards, does Sanchez. Yeah, and we had two guys on the outside from the right and the left collapse in the middle, and Sanchez was just out in front of them. They, they kind of got there a little late. So to bring up second down and four for the Coyotes at the Bulldog 45-yard line. Wide out and a slot to the far side, which is the wide side. Fuentes in the shotgun. Sanchez behind him. Snap is back. Sanchez is going to straight drop. Bulldogs get a little pressure. Throws it up. Bulldogs can go get that. And uh, we drop the interception. David Hammond, good coverage back there as he was behind their speed guy, number 13, Estrada. And uh, that ball just right over the head of David. Estrada might have got a hand in there, but it just went right through David's hands, and he dropped it. So it'll bring up third down and four from the Bulldog 45-yard line for the Coyotes. They went for they went for a uh, strike that time, went deep. Hammond, as Robbie said, was there, just got through his hands, so drops incomplete. Third down and four. Fuentes in the shotgun, Sanchez behind him. Snap back. They're going to pitch it this way. Bulldogs are not going to get there in time. He's to the 35. Inside, down to about the 32-yard line is Sanchez. Watkins makes the tackle down the field, but I, I'm going to say it again. It, uh, Roswell just executing very, very well. They pull the lineman out there. He kicks out, and uh, Sanchez cuts in right behind him, and nobody's there until our safety is able to make the tackle. So first and 10 for the Coyotes at the Bulldog 32-yard line. As they line up in the same formation, a slot and a wide out to the far side. Fuentes in the shotgun, Sanchez behind him. Snap is back, going to run to uh, Sanchez. He bounces it outside this time, and this time he's going to be sacked for a loss of about four yards. That's actually number six, Loya, that uh, was running back that time, and he uh, tried to get him on the left side, bounce it outside, but the speed of Armanderas, he couldn't do it. Armanderas makes a great open field tackle for a loss. So ha he, has he been in this whole time? <laughs> no, no, he hadn't been in the whole time. No. But he's staying in there. No, he comes out this time. All right, so we're – yeah, that's Fuentes just got back in the huddle. Second down and 14 now for the Coyotes. Back at the Bulldog 36-yard line. Empty backfield. Fuentes by himself. Trips to the near side. Twins to the far side. Bulldogs have three down linemen. Snap is back. They are just going to rush three. And there was a hold, and he, he he did throw it this time. It's caught down the field. It's going to be a first down pickup, but there is a hold in the backfield. It'll come back. Well, good job by Fuentes. I mean, it's going to come back. Good job rolling to his left, buying some time. Found Toscano down there. Toscano caught that ball. Armadillo's made a tackle, but play will be coming back. 
So it'll be a 10 yard, not from the spot, they just go 10 yards. So it'll be second down again, all the way back at the Bulldog thir- uh, 46 yard line. So second down and 10, second down and 25. As Fuentes goes over to the sideline, gets his, uh, talks to his coach, now back out into the huddle. As the Roswell Kyle break the huddle, see if they go empty backfield again. They do. Three down line once again for the Bulldogs. Fuentes in the shotgun, snap his back. Bulldogs rush those three. He rolls to the right side. He's going to get to the 40, to the 45, and then he's tripped up. And then there's a penalty come in. So uh, Rodriguez did a good job, number 22 for the Bulldogs, coming up hard on that, lowered his head, went to tackle him low, and Fuentes kind of jumped over him, but he was able to reach up and grab a leg, so Fuentes went down. And I don't think you can hurdle in high school, so maybe that's the call. And, boy, we're seeing Fuentes there. He is dangerous out in open field. He, he can and will run on you. So that, I guess that is the call. He hurdled it. They showed a, uh, they showed a, uh, one of these, but, all right, so it'll be second down again back at their own 48-yard line. So I, I think that was almost a run all the way that time by Fuentes. We got eight guys dropping back into coverage. He, he stood there a couple seconds and just flat took off. So we'll see if they do that again. He is going to have a running back behind him in the backfield, but I don't believe that that is number 22, Sanchez. So Fuentes and uh, number 32. Ap- Apodaca. Apodaca. Behind him in the shotgun. He's going to drop the pass. Bulldogs get a rush on. He throws it out to the left side. It's wide open. Ball come- oh, I thought it came out. He just held on to it. Bulldogs pile up on him, finally get him down, pick up of about 12. That's number 11, Toscano. They just took what the ga- uh, Bulldogs gave him because they're <laughs> so far to go. They gave him the underneath. Pretty good gain, but still a long way to go. So third down and 18, 19. They got to get to the Bulldog 22. They're at the 41. So third and 19 for the Coyotes. Is it 841 on? Oh, no. Um, 810 on the clock and running, or should be running. So again, in the shotgun, is Fuentes has, I think it's Apodaca behind him, looking to throw the ball. He does throw, it's going to be picked off. The Bulldogs with the interception down the sidelines. Go the Bulldogs, he's got men out in front of him. He gets by one Roswell another. Now he turns and runs into a crowd. He's going to be down at the 47 yard line. First down, Bulldogs. Great play by David Hammond. He was running step for step. The ball was a little underthrown so that uh, he intercepted, got that, and then a great run back by him. And that interception uh, can bring you a huge deal uh, you'll get when you intercept from Raul Rodriguez at Artesia Ford. So there was some extracurricular activity after the play. Let's see who they called on, if not on both. Unsportsmanlike conduct would be my guess. The white hat says personal foul against the Coyotes. So idle at 15, the Bulldogs will be inside Roswell territory after the turnover and the personal foul. Well, that's what the Bulldogs needed right there, Joby, was a big play by David Hammond. Stops the offense, and we get the ball back, and now we're starting on the uh, 38-yard line. All right, so the Bulldogs break the huddle just inside the far hash. We're going to go trips to the short side of the field. Receiver to the near side is Duran. Estrada in the shotgun. He's got Galindo to his left. Snap is back. They rush five. Now step into one. Actually went back. It's going to be barely knocked down by the Ar- Artesia offensive player. Carrasco had to turn into the DB. Now, uh, Cazadas uh, just going deep, and he's covered that time by number seven, uh, Nichols, and the ball just underthrown just a bit. Carrasco had to slow up, and Nichols able to uh, look like he's going to intercept it. As you said, uh, Carrasco able to knock that ball out. Trips to the far side again. Sorry, Casadas. yep. Trips to the far side again. Uh, one receiver down to the near side, which is the wide side. Galindo to the left of Estrada. Going to throw the slant. That's caught. And that's going to be a pickup of about six, maybe seven yards. So that's just uh, Sice. Wide receiver on the right side running that slant. Good catch, good throw, and a good tackle by Mordiel. 
Third down and three for the Bulldogs. Right back on the ball. Snap back. Going to turn and hand it off. And we're going to have a false start. There was a flag. You know what? It must be offsides because they didn't stop the play. So I'm going to say offsides on the couch. It's stuffed. It'd be fourth down if it's not uh, for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, seven games in, and these guys know each other very well. Uh, when it's third and short, the Bulldogs line up real quick. You almost know it's going to be a running play, and the Coyotes knew that. And, boy, Galindo got that ball, and he got hit in the mouth and then drove backwards. So it was a loss on the, on the play, but the near sideline judge had threw his flag but didn't stop the play. And it looks like it's encroachment on the Coyotes. And that's what it is. So lined up in the neutral zone, did the cornerback. First and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Coyote 27-yard line. Coach Lynn giving that uh, referee on his sideline who threw that flag in earful. Bulldogs huddle up, first and 10. 7-13 and counting to go here in the uh, third quarter. 15 to zero, Roswell with the lead. A formation look, Lindo to the right of Estrada in the backfield. Snap back, they rush four. He's gonna step into it, and that's gonna be overthrown, or really underthrown, and no flag down. The DB was riding Sice the whole way. Looked like he was on his back pushing him. Yeah, I'm telling you, they're pressing them, and they're, they're, they're putting the pressure on the, the secondary is, which is kudos to the Roswell. If they're not going to call it, then you're going to do it. And so they've done it all night, and it's a lot of pressure on our receivers. Second down and 10, and that I was going to say he lined that up a yard. <laughs> second 11, but he fixes it, does the official. So second down and 10 for the Bulldogs at the 27-yard line of the Coyotes. Tri uh, a formation look. Lindo to the right of Estrada in the shotgun. Looking for the snap, he gets it, fakes the handoff, going to throw it out to the right side, going to step under traffic, and he's going to have close to the first down on the completion. So just getting it to Kahn, lined up in that right slot, and he just bubbles out to the right. Good throw by Estrada. He makes the coyote miss after the catch, who was lining him up, and picks up a good nine yards. And now it's going to be third down and short, and there's a injury timeout. Rosal Coyote coming off the field. Number 14, Connor Nichols, coming out under his own power. Con also was a little bit banged up on the play. I don't know if they were the two that, that got tangled up, but Con stays on the field. I just was watching, kind of trying to shake something off. All right, so third down and short, less than a yard. Galindo to the left of Estrada in the backfield. A formation look, ball in the far hash. Estrada's going to look to throw the ball. He's going to throw it over, and it's in through the hands of Con. Incomplete. Yeah, that's just a tough, you know, on fourth and one. Con going into the end zone. Good defense again. Had a coyote right there. And Con went up as high as he could. And I think it just went off his fingertips. Just couldn't bring that ball in. All right, so that does bring up fourth down and short. About two feet just inside the yard. Come on. As the Bulldogs will line up here and go for it. Coy coyotes have been able to stop them each time that they've gone for it. The crowd on both sides on their feet. They got everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Do the Coyotes. Snap is back. Going to run. Oh, that's Carrasco in at quarterback. He's got the first down. That was a run all the way. And I didn't pick up that up till late, uh, Robbie, but Carrasco came in at quarterback. That's Cazadas. I mean Cazadas, yes. Yeah, so they just put him in to run that and had the extra blocker with Galindo around the right side. And with the speed, got that corner and picked up the first down. And it looks like he's going back in at quarterback. Yeah, Nia's in there, but he's playing out on the slaughter, the wideout. So Estrada on the right side, and Casadas will be in there. Not, I don't know why I said Carrasco. Casadas, he's got Galindo to his left. A formation look. Snap is back, going to turn. Keeps it himself. He tries to run up the middle, and he's only going to get about one, maybe, yeah, about one yard. That's a great job by Noah Lynn, number 71. He got rid of his block that was on him and was the first man to hit uh, Casadas. So it'll be second down and oh he lost a yard. That's wow. All right. I was watching the far line judge. He had him at one yard gain, and then I looked down at the so it's second down and eleven at the ninth at the uh, fourteen yard line. For, uh, Estrada back in shotgun. They bring the house. He's going to throw it over to the right side, and it's going to be incomplete. It'll be third and eleven. 
Sice was running an out route just right at the stick over there, the first down marker, and that ball was just, it was short. He tried to dive and get it, and he couldn't. So a big third down here for the Bulldogs. They can't get a first down, but uh, third down and 11 at the Coyote 14-yard line. Don't need to get it all on one play here. They got two downs to get it. Galindo to the right of Estrada. A formation look. Estrada looking over the defense. Snap is back. And still looking. Going to roll away from pressure. He's just going to turn and run. He's going to pick up about two yards. It'll be fourth and long. So we had uh, three guys in the end zone, and they were all covered by the Rosal Coyotes. So Estrada, you know, good job of not trying to force one in there. I know we were living for fourth and about eight here, fourth and seven, but just ran it out of bounds. I did stop the clock with 5.34 to go. And so it'll be four, and he only got two yards. I thought he got about four. Fourth and ten, empty backfield, trips to the near side. As Estrada looking over the defense, three down linemen. Estrada still looking, play clock under five. Snap is back, looking, look, got to get eight yards. He's going to throw it, and that's going to be short of the first down. He got eight, needed ten. It'll be a turnover on down, the fourth time in the ball game. Uh, Kahn ran that, uh, he ran b beyond the sticks, but then he, had, he came back to get that pass, and that brought him to about eight yards, and he needed ten. All right, it'll be first and ten for the Kyle. It's at their own six-yard line. As their offense comes out, the Bulldog defense comes out. The Bulldogs get the big turnover there and unable to uh, cap capitalize on it. So the defense once again on the field. The Coyotes, Fuentes in the shotgun. I think it's uh, Sanchez back in. Snap back, turn, hand it off. They're going to run that counter. Bulldogs there this time, and they keep him. In fact, may even been a loss of one. Just ran that counter play again, pulled that lineman, but Huffman did a great job of getting off his block and then getting low on Sanchez and making the tackle. So that's what the Bulldogs need right there. He did get back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second down and 10 as Fuentes hustles back in from the sideline. Play clock down to 17, so they got plenty of time. Slotting a wide out to the wide side, well, to the far side. Fuentes back in the shotgun, brings a man in motion, snap back. He's going to pitch it to him out in front. He's going to be turned out there by the Bulldogs, but he's going to get out to about the 11-yard line. So Finley did a great job that time. The receiver trying to block him. He stood the receiver up and uh, trying to get around the outside of him, and he couldn't cut it back in. It slowed him down, and then the pursuit able to come and for the Bulldogs. So it'll be a big third down here for the Bulldogs. If we can get them, hold them here, we'd prop more than likely see the first punt of the ball game. Third down and five for the Coyotes at their own 11-yard line. Tight bunch formation to the left side. Fuentes talking to his running back in the shotgun. Down to six seconds on the play clock. Snap back, going to turn and hand it off. Nowhere to go. He kept it. That's a first down pickup. He fooled me, and he got out about eight yards. First down and 10 for the Coyotes. Yeah, just fake that handoff to uh, Sanchez, hit Kennard over here on the right side, and uh, just a good catch, good throw, good pickup for the first down. First and 10 at their own 18-yard line, ball on the near hash as they'll go back into the huddle here. Fuentes talking to his coach, getting the play. As they break the huddle, they're going to send a wide out in the slot to the far side, which is the wide side of the field. Fuentes in the shotgun. Sanchez behind him, snap his back, turn, hand it off to Sanchez. He's hit at the line, but is able to push forward for maybe a yard. Actually, they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. So what happened that time? They pulled that uh, tackle again, a guard, come around the right side, and Wesson came in right behind him and hit Sanchez uh, before the lineman could turn and block Wesson. So great job by the middle linebacker for the Bulldogs. So one of the Bulldog down linemen had his helmet ripped off. A flag came in late. So we'll see if this is a personal foul against the Coyotes or what the call is, but his helmet was torn from his body. That's Rafael Orozco. And so they're still talking about it, the officials.
still talking about it. The far line judge, and they are pointing towards Roswell. He did anyway, telling Coach Maupin. It's just a matter of what the call is. White Hat now telling us. Personal foul against the Coyotes, ripping his helmet off. He showed it, grabbing him by the face mask. So I guess a face mask, personal foul. So that's uh, half the distance inside the 20. Told you in the first half, it's getting nasty in the trenches down there. And that's just, what, you know, some of what's going on down there. So it'll be first down again, although I would think it's after the play. A dead ball foul, but it it's first down. So they're leaving. Oh, it is second. They did change it. So second down for the Coyotes. Ball in the near hash. They got a slot and a wide out to this near side. Going to turn and fake the handoff. Does Fuentes. He's rolling out, looking. He's in the end zone. He throws it up in the air, but that's a two-point, I think. No signal from the officials. That's either a pass or a fumble. Did the Bulldogs get it? Well, it looks like a Roscoe fell on the ball, whether if it was a fumble. The officials are getting together to talk about intentional grounding right here, and he was in the end zone when he threw it, so if it is called that, it'd be a safety. Crosco had the ball on the ground. They never, the, no official made a call, so I thought maybe they were calling it a fumble. If so, the Bulldogs have it at the three yard line, but we'll see what the call is. Whitehead steps, per, it's intentional grounding. That should be two points for the Bulldogs. Safety. All right, so great job by the Bulldogs. Oh. Actually. They put it on the one oh inside gosh. the one. How was that not a safety? I'm confused. But, I mean, he was three or four yards deep, deep, wasn't he? When he threw the ball. Yes. In the end zone. Yes. Wow. Well, it's a great job by the Bulldog defensive line to get in there and get, get to Fuentes. So we need to do that again right here. It's still showing second down. It is now third. So third down is they're going to go up under center right at, the, at their own goal line. I don't know how that happened, but Bulldogs don't need to jump off sides. And he hands it off, and he will get outside the goal line right about the one. They're going to mark him at the two. So it'll be fourth down and very long at their two-yard line. Great job, Armandaris. He's up on the line in that goal line defense. And, uh, boy, he just hit Sanchez first. A couple other Bulldogs came in there and able to keep him for a, maybe a one-yard game, two yards. They will run with their punter. I wouldn't think they would do it here, but now we got a something as the line judge throws a penalty. And so it's on the motion, the illegal motion. That'll put them back a yard. Yeah, it's number 16, Carrasco, who's punting for the Coyotes. I would not think they would attempt this, <laughs> but I've seen crazier things. Yeah, and I think we should have Armandera's back, and we do deep we for do. the Bulldogs. All right, so he's standing. He's actually, he's on the, looked like he was on the white. That'd be, he need to be careful about stepping backwards here. Snap his back. He doesn't step backwards. He gets it away. That's going to be returnable. Catching another run. 30, 25, 20. Good block. 20, 15, down inside the 15-yard line. And there's a penalty coming in. So we'll see what that is. Armandera is line drive kick, and uh, there was no punt coverage coming down because they were just making sure the Bulldogs didn't block it. And so Armandera's caught that, and he just took off down the left side, had some good blocks out in front of him. So it's good to return by Armandera. So it's going to be on the Bulldogs, it appears, as they're backing up the offensive huddle. The White Hat hasn't told anybody yet. We'll wait on his call. Boy, there's so much going on in this game right now. <laughs> Personal fa They called that on that block. Yeah. That was just a good, oh my goodness. He, well, all right, so 15 yard penalty on the block. Said he blindsided him, I guess. So uh, first and 10 at the 32 yard line of the Coyotes for the Bulldogs. We're in the third quarter, 2.41 to go in said quarter. 15 to zero, the Coyotes lead the Bulldogs. Trips to the far side, Galindo to the left of Estrada in the shotgun, ball in the near hash. Strata looking over the defense. they got four down linemen. They will rush forward. They do a stunt. He's going to throw it, and it's going to be dropped. Crosco dropped the ball, and so it'll be second down and 10 on the incompletion. Well, that's the night for the Bulldogs right there because Carrasco just runs a kind of an in route. He goes down, stops, breaks it inside. The ball hits him right in the hands, and he drops it. So that's the way the night has gone for the Bulldog offense so far. 
Estrada rushes or trots over to Coach Maupin on the sideline, down 20 seconds on the play clock, plenty of time. And he is going to bring him into the huddle to talk about, give him the play. Sice, the only one out. He's on the far side, out there ready to go from his wideout position. We're down to nine now, though, down to eight seconds, seven seconds, so we are going to have to get this ball off. We're under five seconds on the play clock. Estrada looking over everything. Snap is back, gets it off in time. They bring a blitz. Estrada going to step into one. He throws it, and it's going to be in and out of the hands of Khan. Incomplete. So Khan again, just on that post route, and uh, number seven is right with him, Nichols. And from up here, it's hard to tell. That was a perfect throw. Khan reaches his hands out. The Nichols reaches in there. Don't know if Khan dropped it or he knocked it out, but uh, I'm going to give Nichols a great play on that because he was right there. Yeah, good defense in the outstretched hands of Khan, unable to bring it in. So it'll be third down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Again, we don't have to go for it all right here. We've been going for it all a lot. <laughs> all game long and we really don't have to we can just get yards so 10 yards for the first Galindo is going to swap sides and now we're going to have a timeout taken by Artesia so we'll take one as well 15 to 0 Roswell here in the third quarter when you make the right decision it feels good like picking the perfect accent rug or choosing a good night's sleep over an all night crime show binge it feels really good to make the right insurance decision too that's why state farm agent sandy stockton is right here in artesia to help you select the right protection at the right price sandy will make sure you understand your state farm coverages so you'll know what to expect if the unexpected happens with state farm agent sandy stockton it's easy to make the right choice just call her when you want the real deal like a good neighbor state Farm is there. All right, coming out of the timeout, third down and 10 for the Bulldogs. They're on the field ready to go. The, the uh, defense will line up here against the Bulldogs. They come out of their huddle lot for the timeout. Estrada in the backfield by himself, trips to the far side, twins to the near side, ball on the near hash. Estrada takes a look. They got two deep safeties do the Coyotes. Man press coverage up in front. Going to run a sp Oh, no. They didn't see it, but they got him. Ball is out. That's a turnover. They called it a completion. Roswell running down the field. He's got a convoy in front of him. And there's a penalty down on this sideline into the end zone for the fumble recovery for a touchdown. There is a flag on the near sideline, but I think you're just going to call it. I don't know what the hell they'll do that. If they'll call it back because of the sideline interference. So just through that uh, screen out there to Cazardis, and Cazardis caught it, and then he got popped, and let, uh, the ball came out, and Mason Greathouse for the Coyotes picked it up and ran it all down the sideline with a bunch of blockers in front of him. So I don't know how that works, if it's a warning and they get to keep the play or if they got to come back, and it looks like it's just a warning. I see them coming out to do a PAT. So big turnover there for the Bulldogs as they uh, hold the, the Coyotes and get the punt and then just have that fumble by Cazadas and the big return by Great House. Did, he, did the White Hat ever say anything? I was trying to see, but there was a flag, but I guess it's just a sideline warning. PAT on, here's the kick. It is good. So with 2.13 to go in the, in the third quarter, 22 to zero, Roswell over the Bulldogs. It's a date, Trey and Lee Morgan of Childress, Texas will be coming to the Hermosa Church of Christ on Saturday, October 14th to present their Stronger Marriage Workshop. The workshop will be from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and the church will provide breakfast, lunch, and childcare, and tickets are free. If you'd like to RSVP, please call 575-748-3301. So a big swing in momentum, Robbie. We, uh, we, like you said, before we go to the break, we stop them, make them punt the ball, and then we uh, turn it over, I think, for the fifth time in the ball game when you include, well, actually the sixth, when you include four turnovers on downs. Yeah, huge momentum there, but you got to give the Cowboys credit, too. I mean, that was a great hit on Gazadas uh, to knock that ball out. They read the screen well and uh, closed on him fast, so... Uh, Coyotes just again right now outplaying the Bulldogs so far. The beauty is two minutes left in the third quarter, and we know the Bulldogs can uh, score quickly, so uh, they come out and score here and get the ball back, and they can be right back in this. 
I agree. <laughs> All right, so the Raws will line it up on the 40-yard line across the way from us. They've been kicking uh, from that hash mark all game long and they've kicked it on side every time here comes the kick going to kick it deeper this time so the Bulldogs oh and it goes through the hands of size but we're going to run the uh, play but they read it perfectly size didn't hand it off they got him inside the 15 yard line yeah size decided to keep that himself and then the Kyles had great coverage and Connor Nichols number 14 made a great open field tackle on size by himself First and 10 for the Bulldogs. They'll start out at their own 13-yard line near the middle of the field, kind of split between the near side and the middle of the field. The uh, uh, Bulldog offense will come out. As uh, Strada will get into the huddle, he stayed a little bit longer on the sideline talking to Coach Moppin. And we're missing a player, so again, we're into the first team and uh, first game in district and some of these small things like this seem odd. We're missing a we're missing a uh, offensive lineman, and we're down. No, they hadn't started the play clock yet. Luckily, so Bulldogs break the huddle. A formation look. Glendo to the left of Estrada. I think that's Glendo. Steps into one, and nobody there as uh, ball just falls in the middle field, incomplete. Yeah, miscommunication that time between Con and Estrada. Con running a go route. He thought he's going to break across the middle with it. Uh, it. Did bring a blitz that time. Line did a good job of picking it up. So it'll be second down and ten now at their own 13-yard line for the Artesia Bulldogs. Ball stays right where it was at. Kind of cut between the middle of the field and the left hash. Bulldogs going from the south to the north. A formation look once again. Estrada takes a snap, turns, hands it off. Galindo uh, breaks a tackle. He's going to make something out of nothing as they had him right at the line of scrimmage. He ends up getting two yards. Well, he's not as big as uh, Sanchez is, but he runs just as hard because uh, he ran right into somebody and just shook him off and just kept going. So good, hard run by Galindo. Third down and eight at the Bulldogs' 16-yard line as the Bulldogs will huddle up once again. Con and Estrada talking about it before they get into the huddle. So down to 16 on the play clock. As they break the huddle, and they're going to go the A formation look once again as Galindo to the left of Estrada in the shotgun. Down to six seconds. Going to move him over to the right side. Under five seconds. The snap is back. Fakes the handoff. Estrada looking down the field. Steps into one. He's going to throw it way over the top. Incomplete. Uh, again, trying to hit Con that time across the middle. And, uh, I mean, had good protection, stepped up in the pocket and overthrew him. So it'll bring the first punt for the Bulldogs as it's fourth down and eight from their 16-yard line. So the punt team does come on. The punt return team comes on for the Rosal Coyotes. Back to punt is Diego Wesson. As the Bulldogs line up, and looks like, oh, I thought it looked like some confusion, but now they're getting set. And the snap is good, and he's going to punt it to the right side. Boy, he kind of, I don't know if that got partially tipped or just a little bit of a shank, but it's not a real deep punt. It's going to take a Bulldog roll, though, and we'll get back to about the 47-yard line of the Artesia Bulldogs. Good defensive stand by the Coyotes as they... You know, three and out the Bulldogs, and they're going to get the ball in on their side of the field, Bulldogs' side of the field. So good job by the Coyote defense. I don't remember a three and out this year for the Bulldogs. We probably have had one or two of them, but um, it's a rarity. So, as you said, great job, Roswell defense there. Bulldogs um, had a couple of passing attempts. One of them, nobody was there, and the other one was just overthrown by three or four yards. So... Roswell ball at the Bulldog 47-yard line on the far hash. Fuentes in the shotgun. He's got Sanchez behind him in the pistol. Going to turn, hand it off. He busts into the middle. And he'll pick up two yards to the Bulldog 45. So we talked about what needed to happen against that run game, especially Sanchez inside the tackles, is the defensive line had to start making a difference and getting off their blocks, and they're doing it so far. Uh, they did a good job there of, getting off the block and hitting Sanchez. He picked up a couple, but that's not eight or nine that he was getting in the first half. Right. 
So second down and eight. Roswell has slowed it down here, and rightfully so, going to run some clock, leading the Bulldogs here in the third quarter. We're down to 22 seconds, 22 to zero, Roswell. And they will run another play here before the end of the uh, third quarter. Snap back, turn, hand it off to him again. He, this time he breaks through on the left side and picks up about four. Yeah, I pulled that backside garden tackle, went around the left side, sealed him off. Rodriguez had to come up and make that tackle. And that will end the third quarter with the Roswell Coyotes leading the Artesia Bulldogs 22 to zero. We'll be back fourth quarter coming up. It's the big savings grocery sale at Fens Country Market in Artesia. Tropicana orange juice, assorted 52 ounces, two for $7. Blue Bunny ice cream or frozen yogurt, assorted two for $6. Kellogg's Pop-Tarts, assorted two for $7. And Progresso soup, assorted two cans for $4 at Fens Country Market in Artesia. And right now, Pepsi Select Flavors, 24 pack cans, $8.99 each at Fens Country Market in Artesia. Welcome back here to the Wool Bowl, KSVP Radio, AM 990 and FM 93.7, KSVPTV.com, and of course we're on the YouTube and Facebook channels, KSVP Radio. It's going to be third down and four for the Roswell Coyotes at the Bulldog 41, coming out of the third quarter, the end of the third quarter. So we're seeing two punts here back to back, except for the turnover for the Coyotes, but uh, be good for the Bulldogs to hold them here and get another punt. All right, Roswell now on the field. Bulldogs on the field, third and four. Fuentes in the shotgun. He has Sanchez behind him in the pistol. Snap is back, turn, fakes the handoff, looks to throw it. He throws it across the side, and it's going to be caught by number 30. He's got the first down, and then a penalty flag comes in late. So they fake that run, and Apodaca just breaks out of the mess in the middle, goes to the right. Fuentes hits him. Uh, Bulldogs make the tackle, but he did pick up the first down. We'll see what the penalty is. In the area of holding, but we don't know till the white hat tells us. Illegal man downfield against the Coyotes, and I believe that's a loss of down. So, nope, it is not. So it'll be third down. They'll just march it off. So third down and nine now instead of third down and four. As uh, Fuentes comes in from the sideline. Back at the Bulldog 46-yard line for the Coyotes. Fuentes will be in the backfield by himself. He's got trips to the near side, which is the short side of the field. Boy, we're backing off that receiver over there a lot. We're going to rush four. We get to him, but then he runs. That looked like it might have been a, a design run. Fuentes to the 30, cuts back inside to the 25, inside the 25. Big first down pickup for the Coyotes. Yeah, that's a design run all the way. Fuentes, we've talked about all night. He's good at running the ball. And you saw it that time. Went out to the right, cut all the way back across the field to pick up the first down and more for Watkins made the tackle. You know, and they sold it pretty good because he didn't just take off. The reason I, I think both of us knew it was a design run because those offensive linemen were out there ready yeah. to go block. They were down the field when he took off running. So, we, you know, immediately they wouldn't have normally done that if it was a pass play. First and 10 at the Bulldog 23-yard line. Ball in the near hash. Snap is back. Turn. Handed off. Bulldogs in the backfield this time. That's Grantham with the tackle for a loss. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Good job. They stacked uh, West and behind the nose guard. And so it's kind of messing with the line blocking a little bit. Freed up Grantham to make that hit behind the line of scrimmage. Second down and 12 for the Coyotes at the Bulldog 24-yard line. Ball on the near hash. They huddled up. Now they'll break. Fuentes adjusting his uh, socks, looks like. He's got Sanchez behind him. Slotting a wide out to the wide side of the field. Snap is back. He's going to throw. Getting in there is number 11. He gets by him. Fuentes has some green grass in front of him. He's to the 20, and then he goes out of bounds just inside or right at the 20-yard line. Yeah, so our defensive lineman, uh, Johnson, got back there. Fuentes just sidestepped him, and then there was nobody on the left side of the field, and he picked up, you know, some pretty good yards. So it'll be third down and eight at the Bulldog 20-yard line. As the Coyotes in two-down territory, we also know they can kick well. So uh, 
Right now leading 22 to zero over our Artesia Bulldogs. Fuentes in the shotgun. Behind him is Sanchez. Going to turn and run the speed option that way. Fakes the pitch. He's got the first down and more inside the 10-yard line before he's upended by Rodriguez. Ah, quarterback responsibility that time went straight to pitch. And so Fuentes kept it, turned up the field. Rodriguez makes the tackle, but Fuentes pick up first down. First and goal at the nine-yard line for the Roswell Coyotes. The Bulldogs have yet to get a score on the board. It's 22 to zero here in the fourth quarter. 9.56 and rolling here in the fourth quarter. Fuentes in the shotgun. Sanchez behind him in the pistol. Tight formation. Snap is back, gonna turn, fakes the handoff, gonna roll to his right, does Fuentes. Backing up, looking, backing up, looking. Bearing down on him, couldn't get there. He's gonna escape, he's gonna throw it into the end zone. Touchdown, Roswell. Trying to get the number, that's number 12. Just camped out in the back of the end zone waiting for Fuentes to do, it th do his thing, and he did. Uh, he's elusive, he's good, and uh, had a Bulldog bear down on him, sidestepped him, and then just hit Mitchell in the end zone for the touchdown. So the Bulldogs forced him to roll out of the pocket, but just too long, too much time for Fuentes. And as you said, he is good. He was able to move, miss, make people miss, and then find the, the uh, coverage broke down. They were able to kind of scramble around. He is wide open in the back of the end zone. PAT is up and good. So we're in the fourth quarter, 9.29 to go. And the Roswell Coyotes lead the Artesia Bulldogs 29 to zero. Hi, Artesia. Cambria here from your local KFC and Taco Bell. Being a mom of two boys, I know the struggle after a long day of trying to get dinner on the table. So let us take that off your to-do list. Come by and try our 10-piece feast. A 10-piece dark special with mashed potatoes, gravy, creamy coleslaw, five buttermilk biscuits, and a half-gallon beverage bucket of your choice for only $31.99. We will also now honor our competitors' coupons at our location. Yes, that's right. Save your gas from driving across town and bring their coupons to our store. As always, it's great to be a Bulldog, and we hope to see you soon at your local Artesia KFC Taco Bell. Welcome back here to the Wool Bowl. The Coyotes get the score and now lead 29-0 to zero over the Artesia Bulldogs. Bulldog kickoff return unit is on the field. The kickoff team for Roswell on the field. And they'll line the ball up on the near hash. Will number nine for the Coyotes. And he's done a good job kicking tonight. One turnover, the first kick of the ball game, kicked it right at one of our up guys, bounced off and went backwards like 10 yards. And the Coyotes recovered and then were able to score on that drive. Here's the kick, it's gonna be kicked deep and let it go, oh, we go, no. And that's the night for the Bulldogs. Sice right on the sideline, about the five yard line, catches the ball and it, the momentum carries him out of bounds. And so now it's Bulldog ball on the five yard line, but that's the kind of night it's been for the Bulldogs. All right, so first and 10 for the Bulldogs at their own five um, as the offense comes onto the field. Coyotes with a commanding lead right now. Bulldogs can score quickly, but the Coyote defense has been playing outstanding all night. Bulldogs have been unable to really connect on any of their deep threats, which they've thrown a lot tonight deep. I mean, it looked like we came out with that plan to throw it deep a lot. So the Bulldogs go trips to the far side, which is the wide side. Sice to the near side by himself. Galindo steps over to the right side of Estrada. He's in right on the goal line. Snap is back. They're going to rush four. Still looking, still looking, still looking. He's going to throw it out to the right side. It's going to be caught by the Bulldogs. That's Khan. Khan just ran a stop route, and when he started rolling to his left, I mean Estrada, then Khan started moving to the sideline, did a good job. Nichols was there on defense, but better job by Khan. Second down and three for the Bulldogs to get out of their shadow of their own end zone. We got an injured Roswell player, so they're going to give him a minute to uh, get helped off the field. Um, that looks like a uh, big playmaker for them. Noah Lynn is limping off. Getting a little bit of assistance. He is walking on his own, but he definitely has a limp. He's got a coach helping him off the field. So second down and three for the Bulldogs. Hopefully that young man is okay. Going to go A formation look. Galindo to the left of Estrada in the shotgun. Khan has 15 yards out in front of him. Nobody on him, but the linebacker now stretches out a little bit. 
Going to throw it over the middle and incomplete was the pass. Yeah, trying to hit Cazadas over the middle and uh, looked like Estrada had to maybe sidearm that or he did sidearm it if he had to or not and just wasn't even close. Let me just say this. I just I enjoyed that dad moment there. That's Coach Lynn's son that came off and uh, he just walked over there and checked on his boy and he said, I'm okay. So, you know, you go from coach to dad really quick. All right, so third down and three for the Bulldogs. A formation look once again. Galindo to the left of Estrada in the shotgun. Ball on the far hash. And then, whoa. Yeah. Oh That's a false start on the Bulldogs. Galindo, as he started to go, I didn't think they were going to call it, but then they did late. So half the distance puts the ball at the seven-yard line. Third down now. Actually, he marched off five yards. That's right. So it's third down and eight instead of third down and three. A formation look once again. Estrada standing at his one-yard line. Lindo to his left. They show blitz. They bring five. Man breaks up through the middle. Estrada is able to escape him. Now he throws it down the field. That's going to be picked off. Trying to hit Cazadas over there, and he underthrew him. And number 16 for the... Uh, Roswell Coyotes, Carrasco, uh, able to reach down and, and pick that ball off the turf. So another turnover for the Artesia Bulldogs. So it'll be first and 10 for the Roswell Coyotes at the Bulldog 30-yard line after the uh, turnover. And uh, we're in the fourth quarter. There is 8.39 to go here, 29-0. to zero. The Coyotes lead the Bulldogs. As the defense back out on the field, the Roswell Coyote offense breaking the huddle from the sideline. They'll come out with a slot and a wide out to the near side, which is the wide side of the field. Fuentes taking a look over the defense, snap his back, turn, pitch it. Bulldogs were there. They're going to get him right at them. There's a penalty right in the middle of the pile. The Bulldogs that time brought Finley on a corner blitz. Just a run blitz from over there, and he did a good job timing it, coming in and hitting uh, Sanchez early. So good job by Finley. We'll see what the call is. Looks like it's against the Coyotes as they're backing up. It was right in the p spot where there might be a holding, but a chop block on the Coyotes. So that's a 15-yarder. That'll put them back at the Bulldog 45-yard line. First and 25 for the Coyotes. Fuentes. Fuentes in the shotgun, snap is back, and uh, Sanchez will pick up about four or five yards more. It'll be fourth down at the Bulldog 28-yard line. Probably definite four down territory. Uh, good job by Grantham that time for the Bulldogs. He came in, got off his block, and put a 
Put a good hit on Sanchez, made the tackle. So it looks like the offense is going to stay out there for the Coyotes. They'll let the clock run down. They're down to 22 seconds on the play clock, 6.16 and counting on the game clock as they are uh, have Fuentes over talking to Coach Landon. They may run it down and call a timeout. The way he's watching the clock and Fuentes not going back to the huddle, I think that's what the uh, Coyotes are going to elect to do here for the fourth down and eight. Down to three, two, one, and he calls a timeout. We'll take it as well. The Artesia Bulldogs, zero. The Russell Kyle, 29. 5.57 to go in the ballgame. Buying a used vehicle nowadays can be quite scary. <laughs> but not at Dooley's Auto Sales in Artesia. The only thing scary at Dooley's is their frightfully good selection and prices on cars, trucks, vans, SUVs, and crossovers on the lot today. They have something for everyone with low down payments and scary easy financing. Like Danny says. Now tell your car that you want. If I ain't got it, I can get it. If I can't get it, nobody can. So come on down. Dooley's Auto Sales, 1212 South 1st Street in Artesia. Come and save today if you dare. <laughs> Welcome back here to the Wool Bowl, KSVP Radio, KSVPTV.com, on YouTube and Facebook as well, KSVP Radio on those channels. Coyotes have come out tonight, and they have a lead that if the Bulldogs are able to come back from this one, Robbie, it'll be an amazing comeback. Fourth down and eight, 29 to zero. Coyotes, they've got the fourth down and eight at the Bulldog 28 yard line. Their offense is in the on the field. Fuentes drops the throw, Bulldogs bear down on him. They don't get him down, he spins away. He's gonna throw it, it's gonna be picked off by the Bulldogs, Rodriguez. He's chasing down the sideline, 40. He's to the 50, he's to the 40, he's to the 30. Looking down the sideline, he's got one man to beat. He does beat him, and that's a touchdown, Artesia. Great job by Rodriguez. Well, first of all, by the defensive lineman. They got back there. Obviously, didn't get him on the ground. Fuentes just, he's slippery. And then he threw back across the field. Rodriguez cut in front of the receiver, got it, and showed his speed down the left sideline, got the one block he needed. Uh, so the Bulldogs on the board now. 29-6, to 536 to go in the ball game, and that's how you get it started right there. I mean, if you're going to make a comeback with five minutes to go, that's how you do it on a long touchdown uh, interception. And now the Bulldogs will swing out of the swinging gate. Boy, they sent, like, too many guys in motion. I don't – they look confused. They've been doing this all year. They're going to run – they're not – they're going to run the ball. I mean, they're going to – two-point conversion here as Fuentes is going to look to – I mean uh, – and he does get in. I can't get my words out. <laughs> Cazales, back at quarterback, took the, the shotgun snap, went to his left, had a receiver back there, which kind of froze the defender, and then he just made the decision to run it in himself, and he gets the two points. 5.36 to go in the game, 29-8, to 8, Roswell. Cisco Equipment in Artesia is your local dealership for construction equipment, both for rental and purchase. We have a full service department and parts department to provide the equipment, parts, and service you rely on. With brands like Link Belt, Hyundai, JCB, XCMG, and more, we want to be your primary choice for all of your equipment, sales, rental, service, and parts. If you're looking for a specific part, come see us first. Cisco Equipment carries a solid line of new and used equipment for rent and for sale, including excavators, loaders, telehandlers, backhoes, skidsters, and more. We proudly serve southeastern New Mexico, and we offer multiple locations in Texas so that no matter where your job is, we're here to help you get the job done. Stop in and see us today at 1706 South 1st Street, or give us a call at 575-748-1314. We look forward to earning your business. Cisco Equipment in Artesia, a proud supporter of your Artesia Bulldogs. All right, the kicking team coming on, and the Bulldogs are going to have to get a ball back here, Robbie. That was a huge interception by the Bulldogs, just like the awesome deal you'll intercept from Raul Rodriguez at Artesia Ford Sales. 78-yard touchdown, interception return by Josiah Rodriguez. Two-point run was good by Cazadas. Uh, Roswell Kyle's 29, the Artesia Bulldogs 8. Axel Parrish puts the ball about near the far hash mark. And the Bulldogs line up here. They're going to do an onside, of course. It's going to be a hard ball right at number 16. He falls down on it at the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Coyotes. Yeah, the ball took one hop and went right to uh, Carrasco. Did a good job of fielding that and falling down. So offense come out for the Coyotes. So we've got... 5.33 to go in the ball game. 
And the Bulldog defense back on the field. First and 10 for the Coyotes at their own 40-yard line as they break the huddle from the sideline. The scoreboard's showing that each team has two timeouts left in the game. So Fuentes will go from the shotgun, which he has most of the game. Sanchez behind him in the pistol. The slot wide out to the far side. Bulldogs really playing the run here. He's going to turn, fakes the handoff. He's going to run it himself. Bulldogs have collapsed there, and they he steps out of bounds, which helps the Bulldogs, picks up about four and a half. Just to uh, take that run to Sanchez, Armadares on the on the edge out there was coming in hard for Sanchez and bid on that, so Fuente is able to get outside. Second down and six. As Why are they rolling the clock? Didn't he run out of bounds? Yeah, he did. It's not going. It's not. I was just watching. I can't see the clock, but I was watching the line judge, and he did it like this. Well, he's doing it again. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Didn't they go? Well, it doesn't matter. All right. Here we go. Second down and six. Fuentes in the shotgun. Sanchez behind him in the pistol. Snap his back, turn, hands it off to Sanchez. He will get close to the first down, running in behind his offensive line. Weston and Hammond in there on the tackle for the Bulldogs. So it'll be third down and a short one as the uh, Coyotes get the play in from the sideline. What do you bet they give it to Sanchez? I don't know. That'd be a good bet, I think. <laughs> And now they're stopping the clock, and I'm not sure Fit, why. The official timeout. So Grantham came off the field. Didn't look like he's injured. <coughs> Kellen Worley will come in for him. <clears throat> All right, so third down and a short one. I keep saying a short one because it looks like they just got to get the 50 and the ball's just inside the 49. They break the huddle. Tight formation. Fuentes will go under center. Sanchez right up behind him in the stance. Snap his back. He'll just go forward with the quarterback sneak and pick up the first down. Good push by the Kyle line. Bulldogs had three down linemen, then they walked the linebackers into the gaps. And the uh, line just moved them backwards, and Fuentes picks it up. First and 10 for the Coyotes at the Bulldog 49-yard line here in the fourth quarter. It's 29 to 8, 354 and counting on the clock for the Coyotes. As uh, Fuentes, again, will go under center, letting some time run here. He's going to wait. It's down to 11. So we're under 10 now, so he'll go up under center. Sanchez, the three back right behind him. Turn, hand it off to Sanchez. He'll break forward and pick up about four, maybe five yards. Just to give to him and uh, Orozco and Armadares make the tackle for the Bulldogs. So, is there a timeout? Timeout taken by the Bulldogs, it looks like. So, we'll take one. As, no, we'll keep it right here. Keep it here. So the Bulldogs do take timeout. And Robbie, you said we had two left, so now we're down to one? Uh, yes. Well, there's 3.28 to go. 29 to 8 is the score. So a three touchdown lead here for Roswell. Second down at the 45 yard line of the Bulldogs. So um, if the Bulldogs do lose, it'll be the first loss of the season. And we knew coming in, somebody had to lose tonight. So both of these teams undefeated, ranked 1-2 in the state in 5A and in the state overall. Bulldogs fall, they'll be 7-1. The Coyotes will be 8-0 and 1-0 in district. Yeah, and one of the goals you set each year is to win a district championship. Every team sets that. Uh, so this sets Rosal up uh, for that goal to attain the district championship. I don't think it'll change the seeding in the playoffs, but uh, definitely gets them uh, that district championship if it plays out like it should. Hands it off. Bulldogs are there, but he still rumbles forward and picks up at least two yards, does uh, Sanchez. And a timeout taken by the Bulldogs. So third down and five, four, but another timeout taken by the Bulldogs. So so let's talk about that just for a second, Robbie, you, what you said there. If Roswell wins, and right now that's how it's looking, they're going to get the win. 
they'll be one and on district. They are control in control of the district championship because if they can defeat Goddard and Mayfield, then they're the district champs. Yeah, and what that does, and, and if we beat Goddard and Mayfield, uh, then that puts us second, you know, runner up in district. But Goddard is ranked third right now, and then Mayfield's about fifth or sixth, and depending on which poll. So I don't see us moving any lower in two, even with this loss to Roswell. And, and so we go through district. If that happens through district, Roswell wins district, we get second. We're still probably, I would anticipate us being one and two in the state. Uh, so then we'll just hit the playoffs, you know, on the opposite sides of the brackets. All right, so third down and four for the Coyotes as Fuentes goes under center, brings a man in motion. And the Bulldogs jump but didn't jump off sides, so they'll start over again with the Coyotes down to 13 on the play clock. Now he'll look over at Coach Lynn. Go back under center, Will Fuentes. Brings the man in motion again. Now we're going to have a timeout taken by Coach Lynn. So another timeout on the field this time by the Coyotes. And he's asking, I think, why didn't you call him offsides at the end of the neutral zone? Yeah, he had his hands out on the side like, what is going on? I didn't know if he was doing that to his offense. Uh, but then he kind of turned and said some things to the referee. So I think you're right. He was asking, you know, why the flag wasn't thrown. One of the things that the Bulldogs do in those kind of situations, they've been doing it a long time, is they'll line up a, a little bit deeper down the line instead of right up on the line. So that way, if they do kind of fall forward or, or lurch, that they don't get into the neutral zone. And maybe that's what the officials saw there. They obviously didn't call us in the neutral zone because the penalty wasn't thrown. Yeah, Grantham, like you said, he was lined up back a little bit, and he took about six inch, you know, came up six, and then uh, Rodriguez on the outside took a step, but. I mean, I think if he was, they'd have been over there, they would have thrown the flag. Yeah, we've had plenty of flags tonight. I, 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 you know, and they're just the referees are calling what they're seeing, and so that's all you can expect. And so you're right, they didn't see him over the line, so no, no penalty. All right, let's do it again. Fuentes is going to go under center, third down and four for the Coyotes. Man in motion, 13. He hands it to him. He's going to have the first down. Pickup of about seven. First and ten for the Rosal Coyotes. It's kind of a fly sweep there. Under center hands it to 13, which again is their speed guy, Estrada. They got a good block out there. Cut inside that block and picks up the first down. That's going to be really tough for the Artesia Bulldogs. Yeah, unless they can get a, a fumble strip, you know, and go for a touchdown and then get an onside and then throw one pass for a touchdown and, and then get an onside and throw another. <laughs> <laughs> Down by 21 right now. 29 to 8. The Rosal Coyotes with the lead. First and 10 at the Bulldog 37-yard line. Ball on the far hash. And it's, um, Fuentes again will go under center. Sanchez in the backfield. Brings 13 in motion turn. Hand it off to Sanchez. He'll bounce it outside. Pick up about four, maybe five yards. And that's what the Bulldogs are going to have to fix if we do see Roswell again in the playoffs. Uh, we're going to have to be able to stop that running game right there because even knowing they're going to run right now and stack in the box, he picks up, uh, you know, four, what, one, two, three, four yards. So it'll bring up second down and six for the Coyotes at the Bulldog 28-yard, or 32, 33-yard line, and we're down. Well, they stopped the clock. No, it's running. It's running. So 215 and counting. When I looked at it, it was a 215. Fuentes under center, brings a man in motion, turn. He's going to hand it off to Sanchez. He's got a little bit of a gap. He's going to break forward and be drugged down from behind by Grantham. Now again, picks up four yards on that. Uh, Grantham got him from behind, but Sanchez, boy, he's, he's tough to get down on that ground. Uh, kind of drug him down a little bit, uh, drug Grantham a little bit to pick up that other four yards. So it'll bring up a third down and two as we go under two minutes, down to 137 and counting. We'll be under one, we'll be around 110 when they snap this. There's 17 seconds left on the play clock. Now down under 13, 12, and counting. Again, Puentes will go under center. Sanchez behind him in the three back position. Man in motion. It's going to hand it to him. Around that corner he goes. He's got a lot of speed. He is tripped up though, and he'll fall down at about the 20 yard line. First and 10 Coyotes. Boy, you can see that speed as he uh, hit that second gear out there. Finley did a great job of coming off the block, and he just got an arm out there to trip him up. Uh, we did have another Bulldog, but it was open field, so that would have been a tough tackle. All right, so we've got a first and 10 at the Bulldog 20-yard line, and I think all they got to do is take two snaps in the victory formation, 
and they are going to be in that formation here. The Roswell Coyotes will get the win tonight. The score is right now 29-8. to 8. I mean, they, there could be something happen here, but... Snap is back. He's just going to take a knee at the 25. And that'll be it. And that will end the ball game. The Artesia Bulldogs fall to the Roswell Coyotes. The final score will be 29 to 8. And I think that's, yeah, it's going to march off. So we'll go ahead and get the guys Chevrolet post game show going here. When we come back, we'll have the final stats right here on KSVP Radio and KSVPTV.com. Stay right there. Right now, save over $6,000 when you purchase a 23 GMC Sierra 1500 with the one and only 5.3 liter V8. Or get interest as low as 0.9% and save $3,250 when you trade in. Plus, you make no payments until 2024. We haven't seen these savings in years. So don't wait. Drive off in your new Sierra and make no payments until after the holidays. Only at Guy Chevrolet Company in Artesia or shop online at GuyChevy.com. GM. Southwest Printers is a third-generation printing company. From letterheads to business cards and all types of invitations, books, and magazines, our dedicated staff care about your project and work to get it right the first time, every time. Southwest Printers' design team makes your art stand out above the rest. Our printing team will handle your project like it's the only one in the shop. Let us print your signs, banners, window lettering, event tickets, invitations, and much, much more. Remember, Southwest Printers. If you can think it, we can print it. Find us fast in names and numbers. The need to grow past our basic capabilities and experience the impossible will forever keep aviation technology evolving. Within the Aviation Maintenance Technology Program at ENMU Roswell, students thrive knowing that the faculty and community are supporting their success. ENMU Roswell is dedicated to empowering students through hands-on skills training in a nurturing environment. To learn more, contact us today. For five generations, La Fonda Restaurant in Artesia has been home of awesome comfort food for locals and tourists alike. All of our recipes are tried and tested, many for years before becoming a part of the menu. La Fonda Restaurant only uses fresh ingredients, and our portions will fill you up. The October Margarita of the Month is Blood Orange. Five dollars all month long. The best way to get ready for Halloween at La Fonda Restaurant in downtown Artesia. If you're missing a tooth or several teeth, a dental implant may be the ultimate solution. Implants look and feel so much like real teeth that you probably forget you have an implant. Maupin and Brown Dentistry is one of New Mexico's most experienced implant providers with literally thousands of implant patients who are absolutely delighted with the results. Call Maupin and Brown today for an evaluation. You'll be surprised how affordable implants can be. Maupin and Brown, your choice for experience, state of the art dentistry. Welcome back here to the Wool Bowl. The final score, 29 to 8. The Roswell Coyotes defeat the RT Bulldogs. And Josh Howard with the stats. For the Coyotes tonight, 25 first downs, 42 rushes for 263 yards. 14 receptions for 187 yards, and that's 187 passing yards. Fuentes on the night was 14 for 18, three touchdowns, two interceptions, one fumble loss by the Coyotes, 10 penalties for 108 yards. Um, and for the Bulldogs tonight, 13 first downs, uh, 21 rushes for 104 yards, 16 receptions um, uh, for 56 yards on the passing attempt, 16 for 36. Um, Seven penalties for 46 yards tonight. Uh, your leaders uh, for this evening uh, for Roswell, Bryce Sanchez, 31 rushes for 188 yards. Fuentes was five for 44. 
Estrada, three for 26, and Apodaca, two for nine. Passing, Fuentes was 14 for 18, 187 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Leading the way receiving for the Coyotes was Toscano, three for 68. Palomino, one for 36. Estrada, three for 27. Mitchell, two for 26. Kennard, three for 17. Toscano had one touchdown receiving, and Mitchell had uh, two for the Coyotes. Uh, leading the way rushing for the Bulldogs was Galindo, 14 for 79. Estrada was 3 for 16. Cazares, 2 for 4. And Ibarra was 1 for 2 yards rushing. Estrada was 16 for 36, 56 yards and 1 interception. Uh, leading the way uh, receiving was, was Khan. He had 9 receptions tonight for 80 yards. Sice, uh, 2 receptions for 17 yards. Galindo, 1 for 14 and Brown one for three yards tonight. Those are your stats. No offensive touchdowns for the Bulldogs, but one defensive touchdown tonight. All right, so really um, a great night for the Roswell Coyotes as they get the big win over the number one ranked Artesia Bulldogs, Robbie. And of course they were number two ranked. It was a, probably the biggest game of the season uh, in the state as far as people were concerned with the number one and two ranked teams. But Roswell just comes in tonight, and they get a big win. Yeah, they came in ready to play, and as we talked about, they showed more intensity than the Bulldogs. They executed better than the Bulldogs, their game plan. And uh, they, they come out with the win tonight. They In all three phases of the game, I feel like they outplayed the Bulldogs tonight. Uh, on the Bulldogs' end, they're not that far away, 29-8. to eight. Uh, but we had at least two touchdown passes dropped. We had other passes dropped. We had uh, just some overthrows that could have could have made a huge difference on offense. And yeah, and you know, so it, it wasn't that wide of a gap if the Bulldogs execute tonight, like we know they can, like they usually do. Uh, but I, I promise you this: this is not going to stop. You know, the Bulldogs. The coaches are going to they're going to fix what they saw and they're going to learn some things from tonight. And, and I'm just going to throw it out there. I bet we see Roswell again in the playoffs. Well, if we do, I think it'll have to be the state championship games because I think, as you said, uh, they'll go to number one. Um, I don't know where we'll end up after this loss. Goddard may jump us. You know, we may drop. But in any case, if we finish out the district with wins, then I would think we would be the number two seed as long as Roswell doesn't w lose to uh, Goddard or Mayfield they would be the number one seed and so we would uh, theoretically that's how we get us into the playoffs against them would be in the state championship game yeah i kept talking to people this week saying you know whoever loses this game um is going to be motivated obviously it's hard to beat the same team twice in one year that's just if you play sports you know that if you coach you know that uh so i mean whoever loses this game tonight it doesn't mean that their, their season's over right it's just to get, kind of give you that hunger to go in and and as you meet them again, you're ready to go. So I think the Artesia Bulldogs are going to be fine. Obviously, congratulations to the Coyotes. They took care of business tonight. Great, great crowd here for both teams. So uh, it was a fun night. We don't like to lose. I never like to lose. Uh, but you got to give credit to the Coyotes. Now, I will say this, Artesia, we got Goddard at home next week. And then uh, Roswell's playing Mayfield. So you just move on to the next game. That's right. We got two more games left in the uh, district season, as you said. Goddard next week in, in Artesia, and then we'll finish out at the bowl uh, two weeks from tonight against the Mayfield Trojans. So, um, and again, as Robbie said, I'm going to say it too. Congratulations to the Roswell Coyotes. They had a great game, um, game plan against the Bulldogs, and they were able to execute it for the most part and get the big win. On behalf of uh, all of our folks here at the Wool Bowl, Gene Dower, producer, all the camera folks involved, everybody that was. Uh, working on behalf of KSV, and we had two crews going, one covering the Coyotes, one covering the Bulldogs, so we want to thank all of those folks. Of course, Josh Howard with our stats, and my partner, Robbie Blue. This is Joby Hodling saying have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. That concludes this presentation of sports on AM 990 and 93.7 FM KSVP. Sports on KSVP AM and FM is presented by Artesia Animal Clinic, Artesia Credit Union, Artesia Family Health Center, and Presbyterian Medical Services, Artesia Board Sales, Artesia General Hospital, Artesia Plumbing and Heating, Artesia Police Department, Big O Tires, Bob Reed Pest Control, Buckhorn Productions, LLC, Business Notions, Kane Electric Supply, Central Valley Electric, Cisco Equipment, Deans Incorporated, Devon Energy, Dooley's Auto Sales, Edge Safety, ENMU Portales, and ENMU Roswell, Faith Baptist Church, Forest Tire, Guy Chevrolet, H&R Block of Artesia, Hermosa Church of Christ, HF Sinclair, Hawker and Sons, J&J &J Home Care, JS Ward, KFC of Artesia, LaFonda, 
Lois Oliver Real Estate, Moppin' and Brown Dentistry, Pecos Valley Equipment, Pepsi, Pressure Services, LLC, Primary Residential Mortgage, Richland Motors, Roger and Ramona Kilpatrick of Berkshire Hathaway Enchanted Lands, Roswell Seed Company, Smile Expressions, Southwest Printers, Sun Country Garden Center, Tate Branch of Artesia, Turpening and Sons Mortuary, Trustmark Roofing, University of New Mexico, Will Banks Trucking, Sandy Stockton, and State Farm of Artesia. Thanks for tuning into this presentation of sports on KSVP AM and FM. We now return you to your regular scheduled programming. Discount code Clyde 